All right, well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back inside the Macon Centerplex as your Macon Mayhem gets set to host the Fayetteville Marksmen for the second to last time this regular season. My name is Alex Von Coydel. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. We're thrilled to have you with us as the Mayhem gets set to wrap up this home series against one of their most bitter of rivals. This will be the last time the Mayhem play a home game until uh, basically the end of the month. They've got a five-game road stretch um, facing them after this tilt tonight. Fayetteville's in the exact opposite scenario. They've got five consecutive uh, home games after tonight's game. Well, yesterday, a record-breaking home winning streak, which lasted for five games, came to an abrupt end in overtime as the Mayhem fell by a 4-3 final score at the hands of the Fayetteville Marksmen. It was a uh, seesaw matchup which saw three lead changes and a very tight-knit battle in scoring opportunities and shots on goal. Uh, Stepan Timofeyev's goal in the final 5-0-3 of regulation ended up forcing an overtime, which earned the Mayhem a point. But ultimately, they fell nearly immediately in sudden death. Just 14 seconds into the three-on-three -three stanza, the Mayhem, or rather the Marksman, won a board battle in front of the penalty boxes, which sprung Alec Marsh on a two-on-one into the Macon zone. Marsh attempted a pass. It bounced off of the Mayhem defenseman Jarrett Cup on net and ricocheted off the pads of Kevin Etma. Alec Marsh collected his own rebound and uh, just jammed the puck by Kevin Etma and the goal line to seal the game. The overtime defeat put an end to Macon's home winning streak, but it simultaneously extended its three-game point streak. And with that one point accounted for, the Mayhem currently sit tied with the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs for the eighth and final playoff spot in the SPHL standings. Tonight marks the end of the first half of the 2019-20 season for the Mayhem. After this game, they will face a five-game road stretch before hosting their next home tilt on Thursday, January 30th. It will be Macon's second longest gap between home games for the entire season. The longest will be uh, yet to come as well between the months of February and March. So Fayetteville, like we said earlier, in the exact opposite situation, the Marksmen will embark on a five-game homestand after tonight's game. Fayetteville has managed to win all three games against the Mayhem this season. At the Macon Centerplex, each outing has been decided by a single goal, and yesterday's game marked the fourth time in a row in which the Marksmen went to OT. So given the way that the head-to-head -head series has gone this season, combined with both teams' recent engagement in close games, all signs point to tonight's game being another close contest. Should the Mayhem triumph, they would tie the idle Quad City Storm for the seventh spot in the leaderboards. The Storm, of course, uh, not playing tonight due to a winter storm going through the Midwest right now. So uh, Peoria and Quad City, who were scheduled to play tonight at Tax Slayer Arena on the Illinois-Iowa border, will no longer square off. That game has been canceled. As of right now, there is no plan to reschedule it. Um, so we wish the best for all of those uh, players and staff members and fans, what have you to remain safe during that winter storm. I'm from that neck of the woods myself, and I know just how severe those storms can be. Speaking of which, we've got one of our own, more of a, a it's got a southern twist to it. Not so much uh, in terms of the snow, but in terms of the severe weather. And so we uh, may take a bit of a hit in terms of our walk-up attendance tonight, but we're still expecting a pretty darn good crowd here at the Make Macon Centerplex. Most of these fans wouldn't miss a game no matter what's going on outside in terms of the weather. Taking a look at a few roster additions and changes, both teams have a couple. Uh, we'll start with Fayetteville. They uh, have cut Ray Pagazzi, who did not play last night for the Marksman. So he will, not, uh, he will obviously not be in the lineup tonight, but in his stead will be Bo McHugh, who will be sporting the number 20. McHugh uh, just returning from a five-game stint with the ECHL's Greenville Swamp Rabbits, where former Mayhem head coach Kevin Kerr 
uh, is the bench boss there. So McHugh, again, sporting number 20, will be in the lineup tonight for the Fayetteville Marksman. Now for the Mayhem. They have gotten Zach Urban. They've gotten their own reinforcements from the ECHL. Uh, Urban has returned. He had just um, gone through his second tour of du duty in the coast this season. The first was in Kalamazoo. This most recent one was in South Carolina with the Stingrays, who are having a very good season. And Urban, in three games played there, he uh, registered an assist and two penalty minutes and a plus-one rating. But uh, he has been sent back down to the Mayhem, so he will be in the lineup tonight for Macon and will be sporting an alternate captaincy role as well as he will join Stathis Sumalitis and Stephen Pirog as the other two captains. So Urban returns, and then Kevin Etma, I was told, uh, endured a lower body injury during yesterday's game, so he will not be in the lineup tonight. He will not dress, but uh, Evan Watts, who is the Mayhem equipment manager, will serve as tonight's emergency backup goaltender to Hayden Stewart. Now, Stewart played very well in Macon's uh, game against Pensacola one week ago today down at the Pensacola Base Center. It was his debut with the Mayhem, and the Cornell graduate stopped 40 of the 42 shots he faced, so he certainly impressed in that tilt of, against a very challenging opponent, and tonight will be no slouch either as he faces yet another strong adversary in the Fayetteville Marksman. Their record coming into this game, 15-3-6. Right now they sit tied with the, the uh, Ice Flyers and the Ice Bears for the second spot in the SPHL standings, but the Marksmen have four games in hand over Knoxville, and an equal amount of games in hand with the Ice Flyers. The Ice Flyers have won two more games than the Marksmen have, but Fayetteville has lost two more games in OT, hence uh, the four additional points. So uh, the Marksmen, like we said earlier, lots of close games with them recently. Their last four games have all gone to extra time, and given the uh, recent history between these two rivals, it would not be far-fetched in the slightest to expect another overtime matchup here tonight. It is Marvel Superhero Night, folks. The Mayhem will be wearing specialty jerseys for tonight's game in recognition of that night. The jersey will be sold at a live auction in the Centerplex lobby immediately following tonight's game. It should be a lot of fun. We've got uh, Avengers music going on in the Coliseum right now, Captain America, and so much more. We're really looking forward to tonight's game. The Mayhem hosting the Fayetteville Marksmen for the second to last time this season. They will... Uh, face the Marksman one more time on this ice in game number 43 on Friday, February the 21st, followed by hosting Birmingham on Friday, or rather Saturday, February 22nd, but that is very far down the line. Tonight the focus is all about taking two points from a team that has gotten the better of them three consecutive times. The Marksmen again have defeated the Mayhem in all previous, mat previous matchups this season. And all of them were decided by a single goal. So certainly an enormous chip on the shoulders of the Mayhem players, fans, staff, all personnel pertaining to the team. Everybody wants these two points tonight before they see the Mayhem off for a five-game stretch of road tilts in some very challenging barns, the first of which will be Fayetteville next Friday, January 17th. And then they will head to Roanoke immediately after that and a trip to Peoria, which is never fun for the mayhem, not just because of the extensive travel and the uh, long amount of the uh, long amount of time it takes to get up to Peoria, but also obviously with uh, just playing that team, the mayhem have uh, not been able to best Peoria in the past couple of seasons. Taking a look at our three keys of tonight's game for the Mayhem. Number one, feeding off the energy early. We're expecting a solid crowd on hand here for Marvel Superhero Night. Feeding off that energy that the crowd brings to the table will be paramount for the Mayhem. Number two, keeping their heads on swivels. Far too many times last night, some of Fayetteville's most dangerous players found themselves uncontested and wide open in very danger dangerous areas of the ice. So that's going to have to be remedied tonight. And finally, a physical forecheck. Coach Michael has... Uh, said it several times, one of Fayetteville's strength is, strengths is how well they break the puck out of their own zone, and it starts on the blue line for them. Defensively, they're very good at making a good, quick first pass, so making life difficult on those defensemen. Cody Schwartz, Oscar Arfelt, Don Oliveri, Nicholas H., and others will be key for tonight's game. So feeding off the energy of the crowd, keeping their heads on a swivel, and playing a physical game on the forecheck, these have been your three keys of tonight's game. Taking a look at who's hot for the Mayhem, Dylan Denemy had a goal and an assist in his return to action last night, his first game in Macon since April of 2018, and he did not disappoint. Nearly two years since he had played in this building, 
and he gave the uh, audience here exactly what they were hoping for, hoping to see from Dylan Denemy. A uh, shorthanded goal, the team's first in well over a year, and then a primary assist on Marcus Ortiz's goal, which was just a second away from counting as a power play strike. Steven Pirog notched three assists last night and has regained the lead in terms of assists on the mayhem. He has 16 on the campaign, which is three higher than the next closest, and Jarrett Cup with 13. And finally, Stathis Sumalitis has had an assist in back-to-back -back games. Last night had a critical one on Stepan Timofeyev's goal, which would eventually launch an overtime period in which the mayhem came away with a point for the third consecutive game. Taking a look at who to watch from Fayetteville's side of things. John Gustafson, former Mayhem forward. It was his marksman debut last night. Spent a lot of time in the ECHL this season and right away at this level made a huge impact. Had two goals and an assist in his marksman debut yesterday. Max Cook, he's got a goal in all three games against the Mayhem this season. And finally, Brian Bowen, who is now second in the SPHL with 15 goals on the season, trailing only Knoxville's Bryce Nielsen in that department. These have been your players to watch for both teams. Right now, the Mayhem sitting tied for eighth place in the SPHL, sitting two points behind the idle Quad City Storm, so one would have to think that it's a very tantalizing opportunity for Coach Ryan Michael and the Mayhem to go into their road trip, having uh, surpassed Roanoke and Birmingham and tied Quad City for that seventh spot. That is on their minds without a doubt here tonight. As for Fayetteville, well, they're tied for second with Pensacola and Knoxville, 36 points on the season between all three of them. Fayetteville's record coming into this tilt is 15-3-6 through 24 games played. Macon's 8-15-4 through 27 games played. The referee for tonight's game is Nolan Bloyer. The linesmen are Corey Fossa and Michael Smith. The starting lineups for your Fayetteville marksmen are as follows. Trevor Gorsuch has been given the green light to start a second consecutive game. He played fairly well yesterday, stopping 36 of Macon's 39 shots on net. And he has earned the right to start again for Jesse Kalecki and the marksmen. Blake Wojtala has been Kalecki's go-to goaltender since Danny Taroni was called up to the ECHL. But tonight it's Gorsuch getting the nod to go yet again. Uh, on defense, they are going with Cody Schwartz, the German-born defenseman, who will be joined by Travis Jake on his left. Jake, the reigning SPHL's defenseman of the year, and scored two goals against the Mayhem back on opening night in October, and has not scored a goal since, but is always dangerous when he's got the puck on his stick. Up front, Matt Robertson, Shane Bednard, and Bo McHugh are the starting forwards for Jesse Kalecki and the Marksman. The Mayhem starting lineups will be announced momentarily by Charles Olson, the Mayhem public address announcer. Macon in its last five games with a record of one, two, and two, but it's taken points in each of its last three. Fayetteville has taken points of each in all of its last five games, going of a record of three, zero, oh, and two in that span. Both of these teams love to shoot the puck. They're both in the top four in the SPHL in shots for per game. They're also both in the top half in shots against per game. Very good at controlling the tempo of the, of the game start to finish. Very strong five on five teams. Mac, the beloved mascot here in Macon, was absent last night, so his return very much welcomed by the audience here at the Macon Centerplex tonight. And with pride, he's waving that Georgia flag as he skates out onto the Macon Centerplex ice. Certainly a boost of the moral support to have our beloved mascot back in the fold for tonight's game. He was sorely missed yesterday and the spirit that he brings to the table. The Mayhem starting lineup about to be announced right now by Charles Olson. Zach Urban, fresh off his return from a stint in the ECHL with the South Carolina Stingrays, is back. Just in the nick of time to join the Mayhem for Marvel Superhero Night this evening. Wojtek Zemlitska, a native of the Czech Republic, will be flanking Urban on his left side. Let's go with a goal and three assists, four points through 16 games played this season. It's been a nice addition from the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. And the Mayhem captain, Stephen Pirog, will be centering Macon's starting line tonight, as he so often does. 
The Mayhem captain just recently pulled ahead in the team lead and assists on the season with 16. He was tied with Jarrett Cup until he notched three yesterday. Marcus Ortiz, the man who he so often sets up, leads the team in goals with 11. Had one last night. He will be on Pirog's right, while Stafford Sumalitis will be on Pirog's left. Sumalitis with a critical primary assist on Stepan Timofeyev's game-tying goal last night. Hayden Stewart, for the first time this season, playing a home game for the Mayhem. He has played several games in this building, but never for the Mayhem. He was the goaltender who ultimately eliminated the Mayhem from the President's Cup postseason last year. Back in April of 2019, he was Knoxville's netminder. The Cornell University graduate played an outstanding game one week ago today against the Pensacola Ice Flyers, stopping 40 of a possible 42 shots. And he has already earned the trust and the respect of many of these fans who are very much looking forward to seeing what he can do in net tonight for the Mayhem. The singing of our country's national anthem will be next, folks. We'd like to thank you so much for joining us tonight on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. We're going to take a brief pause and be back immediately after the anthem is sung. Well-deserved stick tap and round of applause extended in the direction of that young lady for singing our country's national anthem. Uh, an excellent job she did. The Mayhem wearing their specialty Marvel superhero jerseys. Every team in the SPHL having a Marvel superhero night this season. And a very special ceremonial puck drop about to take place now down by the Zamboni door. Jeff Sanders, former captain of the Macon Mayhem, Beg your pardon, not the Zamboni door, the uh, door next to the Ortho Georgia Dashers um, leading to the tunnel down to the Mayhem locker room. Jeff Sanders, a class act, back in Macon again, and he's going to shake the hand of a former teammate of his down there, Stathis Sumalitis, at the onset of the ceremonial puck drop. Great seeing Jeff Sanders back at the Macon Centerplex again. He got a pretty good round of applause from the Mayhem faithful here at the Macon Centerplex. He is something of a hero in these parts. So like we were saying, folks, the Mayhem wearing, uh, partaking in, in a league-wide Marvel superhero night. This is their night. The Mayhem wearing very slick-looking Marvel jerseys with... Uh, Purple on the right side and uh, orange on the left. They're going to be skating from the right side to the left side of your screen on SPHL Live. The Fayetteville Marksmen wearing their road white sweaters with black shorts and black helmets. They'll be skating from the left side of your screen to your right. After tonight's game, one half of the 2019-20 regular season will be in the books for the Mayhem. They're hoping to end the first half on a positive note and embark on a five-game road stretch on a positive note as well. The referee for tonight's game is Nolan Bloyer. The linesmen are Corey Fassa and Michael Smith. Again, this is game number 28. After tonight, half the season will be over, and the Mayhem will turn the page to the next chapter of the story that has been the 2019-20 season. Steven Pirag to take the first faceoff of this game. 
And he'll be countered by Shane Bednard, the cousin of Marksman broadcaster Sean Bednard. The puck drops, and this game is underway. Fayetteville winning the opening draw, and Travis Jake slithering one into Macon territory, and beyond Hayden Stewart sticking around the boards. Out of the near side, where Zimlitska will pot it to Pirog, given behind the net, Urban. Outlets one up the right side, and it's punched further over the stick of Sumalitis. And an icing call is made uh, quickly as Ortiz's pass is sort of sailed over the stick of Sumalitis, and the line's been making the call. That icing call's been brought to you by Tropical Smoothie Cafe, and it comes just 15 seconds into this contest. In an ideal situation, the Mayhem would be able to defeat the Marksmen in regulation and prevent them from taking any points out of this game as they look for two points themselves. However, the Marksmen have done an outstanding job uh, in uh, at least gaining points this season. They are tied for the league low in regulation losses this season with the Peoria Rivermen with just three. They have always, almost always found a way to at least get a point, even through their losses. And Max Cook will drop it off to Don Oliveri at the left point. He sets up a screenshot and fires, getting a piece of it, Stewart. And Pirog picks up the rebound and will skate it down the right side near the benches. He puts one ahead to Sumalitis. It went off of a Fayetteville stick. Look out. Three players go colliding near the sign station ice logo. Uh, right beside the Fayetteville blue line. Now it's been rimmed around to Brian Bowen, who will tip one further. Max Cook can't get by Larry Smith. And now Bowen will... Enter the attacking zone on the right side, hangs on to it, loses possession, and Smith will bounce one off the near boards and up to Dylan Denemy, who had a goal and an assist last night and has returned to Macon. Cousineau sets up Denemy in the left circle. He's got it on his backhand and fires, and a save is made by Gorsuch, and the loose puck is corralled by Sean Lynch, who will send it across for a shot by Campbell that redirects wide. Denemy will roll it back to the point for Campbell. He spins, that's cup rather. He turned it over in the slot, and now... Fayetteville will escape with the puck on their sticks. Uh, McCloy does a toe drag and a shot, and Stewart never saw it. It got blocked by D'Alivera and has flown out of play. That flying puck's been brought to you by Blues Painting and Home Repair. Speaking of flying pucks, folks, it uh, warms my heart to say that um, Kathy Fowler, who is the, uh, the Mayhem season ticket holder who was unfortunately struck by a flying puck, is okay. She had seven stitches last night. Uh, a fractured orbital bone and a cheek contusion, but uh, after the CT scan, it was determined that she would be okay. And we appreciate everyone whose thoughts and prayers were with Kathy and her family during that difficult situation. And uh, she has pledged her unwavering support to the Macon Mayhem, is at tonight's game, and will continue to support the team going forward at uh, each and every Mayhem home game. So a stick tap to Kathy Fowler. And as Trevor Gore, such gloves, a wrist shot from the right circle. A stick tap as well to the Fayetteville Marksman who signed a stick for her. And saw to it that she was given that stick today. The Mayhem also giving her a helmet and a signed puck in gratitude for her unwavering support as well. The Mayhem win an offensive zone faceoff and Zach Urban, long screenshot, just misses the left post. Good effort by Urban, who scored a goal in his last game with the Mayhem. Timofeyev's pass is picked off by the marksman, Brian Bowen. Lost it to Timofeyev, who was met by, by Oliveri. And now here comes Bowen on a counterattack. Oliveri's on side. Here's a shot by Cook. Fought off by Stewart. Came out aggressively and shouldered it away. Now it's Bowen. Had his shot get blocked. Didn't have much on it. Timofeyev loses his stick. But the Mayhem are out to center with it as Pirag put it. Beyond Staff of Sumalitis' reach, Sumalitis will tap it to Pirog in the far corner. He looks to center it, try to get it through a maze of marksmen. Couldn't do it, but Pirog's back on it. Far half wall. He sends it off the stick of Dylan Denemy, and it's recovered by the marksman given to Nicholas Sage below the Fayetteville goal line. 17.08 to go here in period one. No score at the Macon Centerplex. Alex Von Cordo, the voice of your mayhem, thanking you for joining us tonight, folks, in the Mayhem Broadcast Network. Don Oliveri on the breakout, sends it to his left, and it's John Gustafson who will bounce one down into the Macon zone. Jarrett Cup is in a race for it. It's one instead by the marksman who got there first. Alex de Oliveira has it behind his own goal now and will work it up to Sean Lynch on the left side. He backhands one by Tim Keelick. Josh Kuzno runs into a couple of marksmen, gets it back, sets up Denemy who couldn't drive to the net. He was dispossessed of it by Shane Bednard, it appeared, and now... Swiveling with it. Right point, Sean Lynch. Backhands it to the goal line. Denemy is there, pursued by Jake. He spins away from Jake, loses the puck, and the marksmen have gotten it up to their own slot and will clear it. 
John Gustafson banks it off the boards. A foot race is on. Icing is called against the marksman. Taylor McCloy unable to win the foot race. Jarrett Cup just getting the better of him. So an icing call is made against Fayetteville, and the Mayhem will go to an offensive zone draw in their zone. 16-15 to go in the first period. No score at the Macon Centerplex. The faceoff will be in the left circle to the right of Trevor Gorsuch, his blocker side. And David Pulowski gets ready to take an offensive zone draw. Had a two-game goal-scoring streak snapped yesterday, but he wins the faceoff cleanly to Marcus Ortiz, who's shot redirected off the pads of Trevor Gorsuch. It looked like Josh Keplinger got a piece of that shot on the way through. Marcus Ortiz steals it at center. He fires from there. He was on a delayed offside. It was denied by Gorsuch. Not sure that goal would have counted even if it was scored by Ortiz because uh, the Mayhem were on a delayed offside, I believe. I've seen that happen once or twice in the NHL when a goal was scored in the, from the neutral zone and it didn't count because it was on a delayed offside. Bo McHugh. He and Larry Smith go tumbling in the near corner near the sign station dashers. The Mayhem have cleared it, and in pursuit of it, Marcus Ortiz. Josh Victor gets there first. He spins away from Ortiz, sends it up to McHugh. Good diagonal pass, and McHugh is stymied at the blue line by Wojtek Zemlitska. He will slip it through him. Here's a shot by Robertson. Hit the outside of the left post. Swiped at by Timofeyev. Can't clear it past McHugh. Far point. Down to the goal line. Robertson, another shot. He, shot. he was set up by Max Cook, and he just missed the left post. Now it's Wojtek Zemlitska put it behind his own net and Robertson trying to steal the puck back. The Mayhem have it. Zach Urban bounces it up the left wall. Timofeyev in across the blue line to Sumalitis. His pass never reaches Pirog. It's sprung away from Don, by Don Oliveri up to Brian Bowen on the right side. And Bowen had played that puck with uh, by uh, being uh, over the blue line prematurely, so an offside whistle is blown against the marksman, and we're going to head to our first media timeout of this game. Scoreless at the Macon Centerplex with 14.41 to go here in period number one. Thanks so much for joining us, folks, on the Mayhem Broadcast Network on Marvel Superhero Night. Hope you're enjoying your weekend thus far. We're going to take a brief timeout on the Mayhem Broadcast Network and be back in just a moment, folks. Keep it right here on SPHL Live and on YouTube. Are you looking to raise some money for a cause and have a blast while doing it? The Mayhem would be happy to help you out through our fundraiser program available for all home games throughout the season. You buy tickets from us for $10 each, you sell them for $15, and you keep the remaining $5 per ticket sold for whichever cause your heart desires. If you were to sell 50 tickets, for example, you would collect $250 for your fundraiser. Call our office at 478-803-1592 for more information. So there will be a neutral zone draw right in front of the Beyond Taboo Tattoo penalty box, which the Mayhem win cleanly, and Josh Cousineau will slide it back to Jarrett Cup in his own zone. Cup begins the breakout for Macon. He sends it right up the middle, tipped further skillfully to Sean Lynch, who is met by heavy resistance. Cup will have to reset in his own end. Cup goes up the middle. Cousineau slides it back to Alex D'Oliveira. The ex-Quad City Storm defenseman leads the Mayhem in plus minus. Gets it back from Cup. Fires it over to the far wall. Cousineau up to Lynch. Tips it into Fayetteville ice. It's gloved down by Oscar Arfelt. And the marksmen have it in the neutral zone now. Alec Marsh, who scored the game-winning goal in overtime yesterday, dangles into the slot and drops it off to Bowen. Bowen rattles it to the line. Oscar Arfelt, long screenshot, gets blocked right in front of Stewart, who never saw it. Lots of bodies in front of him. Larry Smith is down on a knee right now. He looks like he's in a little bit of pain. Beg your pardon, that is Josh Cousineau who's down. He's back on his skates now, but does not look the most comfortable at the moment. And Dylan Denemy has just whacked the puck all the way down. This will be an icing called against Macon. He and the Mayhem will gladly take that. Cousineau's going to have to stay out there. He's sort of laboring out in the neutral zone now. We hope he's all right. And Fayetteville screaming that Josh Kuzno took an illegal line change. David Pawlowski going on in Kuzno's stead. The Mayhem arguing that Kuzno is injured. 
And Jesse Kalecki is calling for the attention of the linesman. He's not going to get it. Kalecki and the marksman not happy over on the Fayetteville bench. Dylan Denemy whacks it down. This will be a second consecutive icing call against him in the mayhem. That icing call has been brought to you by Tropical Smoothie Cafe. And we hope that Josh Cousineau is all right. Well, what would make Fayetteville truly furious is if Cousineau is right back out there on the next shift. Uh, the Mayhem do a defensive zone draw. David Pawlowski against Tim Keelick. One by the latter of the two. One handed to the line. And it's Cody Schwartz. Sets up Jake for a one-timer who missed the left post. Keelick, far corner. Tim Keelick swivels into the slot. Maintains possession of the puck with Pawlowski trying to spear it away from him. Puts it in behind the goal line. Dylan Denemy comes away with it, but he's pretty gassed at the end of a shift. He's already iced it in back-to-back -back instances. This time he has managed to get it out of the zone without icing it, but it bounced away from David Pawlowski. It rolls around to the far half wall. Ortiz was awaiting it, never reached him. It's delivered behind the net. Travis Jake has it. It's Tim Keelick, I beg your pardon. He will swivel up into the deep slot with it, leaves it at the line for Nicholas Sage, and that puck's gone out of play. That flying puck's been brought to you by Blues Painting and Home Repair. 12.37 to go in the first period. No score at the Macon Centerplex. The Mayhem were absolutely exhausted on that last little uh, surge. The past minute or so, they were pinned in their own zone, unable to get off the ice. They were losing every foot race for the past 45 seconds or a minute. And they've finally gotten some fresh bodies out there. Steven Pirog to take the defensive zone draw. Loses it. Quick shot by McHugh. Is blockered away by Hayden Stewart. Sumalita steals it at center. Passes it to himself off the far half walls. Closed off by McHugh. Sumalita goes down and below the Fayetteville goal line. McHugh comes away with it. Backhands it right up the slot. Beautiful pass right to Bednard. Bednard turns it over at center. Sumalita fires it off a stanchion into the... Fayetteville zone. Nicholas Sage drops it to Don Oliveri, and he will give a pass up to Shane Bednard. Bednard across the left wing line, the blue line on the left wing side. He turns with it in the far corner. Who's watched, watched every step of the way by Larry Smith. Oliveri, long shot, tipped wide, and Smith will roll one around to the far wall. Mike Chamello's got it for Macon. Chamello up to Sumalitas. Sumalitas will twist it to Stephen Pirog. Right circle, slap shot, scores. Stephen Pirog has given the Mayhem a 1-0 lead with a bullet from the right circle, his seventh goal of the season. It's 1-0 make it. That was an absolute howitzer from the captain. Couldn't get him a special Captain America jersey for tonight like we originally wanted to, but... What an excellent goal from Steven Pirog. Certainly more of a playmaker than a goal scorer, but he did not look like a playmaker there. He looked like a pure goal scorer on that rocket that went off the left post and in. So the Mayhem really catch a huge break. They've been uh, pretty heavily outplayed for the past few minutes, but Steven Pirog Spectacular individual effort. Came right back the other way and fired one. Just blasted it by Trevor Gorsuch, who had not seen a lot of action in the past few minutes. And sometimes that happens. Hasn't really been, been able to get himself into too much of a rhythm just yet. And Steven Pirog caught him off guard. Max Cook fires. Pad save by Stewart. Dylan Denemy down the right wing. Denemy does a toe drag of his own, but he loses it in the slot to Cook. Cook will feed it to Bowen, who has to whack it by Alex D. Oliveira at the blue line. D. Oliveira shovels it along his own end wall. Goes past Jarrett Cup. Far half boards. Chiseled back to the point by John Gustafson. And Chimelo will backhand it up to Pawlowski, who wasn't quite in stride. Gustafson will take back over in the neutral zone, and Slip it through by Jarrett Cup. Kielik fires it across the crease. Pawlowski will pick it up off the far half wall. And now it's hacked at by Timofeyev. Kept from going out of play on the far side by Chamello, who drives. 
That's Ortiz, rather. He spins with it in the far corner. Will set up Smith in the deep slot. His shot redirects wide. Now it's going to be collected in the near corner by Fayetteville. It's Cody Schwartz. He coughs it up. It's backhanded to the line to Smith. And Smith's shot gets blocked and eventually taken away by Tim Keelick. Keelick slides it around the wall to Travis Jake. Went past him. Campbell keeps it in the zone. Now Campbell will have no choice but to take it out of the offensive zone as he was pressured and will just rattle it into Fayetteville territory. Around the boards. Took a very strange bounce and just sort of stopped in its tracks. It's Gustafson tipping it out. So not go nearly far enough for icing. The marksman will be able to change personnel. We're halfway through period one. The Mayhem have a 1-0 lead. Steven Pirag with the lone goal. And a slap shot from the right circle. He's got it again. Tries to slip one through, hoping for Mike Chimello, but it never reached him. It was just outside of his reach. Bednard will punch one ahead. Don Oliverian across the Macon blue line. His shot sailed high and wide. Kept alive at the left point by Nicholas Sage, but turned over to Stephen Pirag. He drops it to Ben Campbell. Campbell up to Chimello, who tips it further. And the marksmen have fired it back into Macon ice. Smith gets it out of there quickly. Lynch tips it further. And now it's Nicholas Sage with it in his own zone. He bounces it off the boards out into neutral territory. It's shoveled into the Macon zone now and twisted by Stewart out to the far wall. Sumalitas backhands it off the boards and out. He'll get another chance with it. Statha Sumalitas to Larry Smith. Smith goes up the left side. It's redirected into Fayetteville ice by Josh Kaplinger. Played by Josh Victor near corner. Oscar Arfelt able to wedge it up the far circle, and now it's Wojtek Zemlitska out at the red line. Here come the marksmen. It's dropped to Cook, right circle. He slides it over. It's broken up by Sumalitas, who is in the perfect position to intercept that pass. Keplinger down his off wing. Loses the puck. It squeaks by David Palowski. Max Cook will commence a counterattack. Brian Bowen attempts a diving pass. That doesn't work out. Zach Urban in his own zone. Rattles it off the boards. Uh, the neutral ice. 7.54 to go in the first period. 1-0 Macon. Steven Pirog with your lone goal tonight. Hayden Stewart. Gets it to D'Olivera in the far corner. He has just cleared it out as far as Travis Jake at the red line, who will immediately hammer it back in. Good job stopping the puck by Stewart. Swiped further by D'Olivera out to Cousineau. Good to see him back out there. A little bit concerned for his well-being after he looked shaken up after a defensive zone faceoff earlier in this period. Travis Jake up to Taylor McCloy. He fires. Good stick by Alex D'Olivera. Blocked the shot. That flying puck has been brought to you by Blues Painting and Home Repair. That's Taylor McCloy, whose shot was blocked, and he's a very dangerous player. Eight goals this season, second most on the marksman to uh, Brian Bowen. One more than Max Cook has, who scored yesterday. McCloy, an alternate captain. 22 points this season, leads the entire league in plus-minus with a plus-20 rating. By far the highest on his team. Played three seasons with Kevin Etma at Adrian College. He's coming off a strong rookie campaign with Fayetteville. And has been a point-per-game guy this season. 7-18 to go in the first. one nothing making your score. Marksman will go to an offensive zone faceoff. Shane Bednard against Josh Kuzno, who's just been booted out of the circle. And Sean Lynch takes the draw in his stead and wins it back to the near corner. And it'll be scooped out of there by Jarrett Cup, who begins to race out of his own zone with it. Cup gets it up to Denemy. Has to one time it by Nicholas Age, who is down covering the puck in front of the Fayetteville bench. It looks like he might be in some distress. That is not far from where the boards were bad yesterday. The 
during the second intermission, folks, of last night's game, in case you missed it, there was a very long delay where the mayhem and the marksmen did not go back onto the ice for probably seven or eight minutes longer than they were supposed to because the ice near the far boards, um, I'd say probably 10 to 15 feet to the left of the Fayetteville bench, uh, were not, the ice was not holding up very well. And the rink crew here was trying to smooth it out as well as they could before the third period started. So here comes Team of Fayev racing down the right side, slips it in front, whacked at the goal, and ultimately blocked by Fayetteville's Brett Johnson. But the marksman can't clear it. Ortiz far side centering. Pirog couldn't get the one-timer away as the puck ricocheted off of Fayetteville's stick and out to center. Now it's Alex D'Alavera pumping one up. Team of Fayev floats a nice pass over to Pira, or rather Ortiz on the far side. Pira gets his stick in there, wins the battle, kicks it up, and coughs it back up to Nicholas Sage. Sage up to Mark, who can't clear it. Timofeyev's shot is disrupted and punched out across the Fayetteville blue line. Timofeyev circles back into his own zone with 6.15 to go in the first period, and the Mayhem leading by a goal. Steven Pirog's strike coming at 8.17 into the contest, a lone assist to Stathis Sumalitis, who is on a nice little roll. He's had four points in his last five games now. An assist in three straight. Keplinger drives down his off wing. He draws a hooking penalty, and the Mayhem will be going to a power play for the first time tonight. Aiken's power play has been um, quite cold lately. It has not scored a goal on the man advantage in its last six games. However, it did score one just one second after a power play expired yesterday, and it was because of that power play that the goal was scored. So, perhaps tonight is the night. 5.57 to go in the first period. The Mayhem going to the power play for the first time tonight. A two-minute minor called against Josh Victor for a hook which was drawn by Josh Keplinger. This Mayhem power play is brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Kuzno rattles it to the point for Urban, and he was harassed by Johnson. As a result, it was turned over, and it's been floated in behind the making goal line and played by Hayden Stewart. Urban begins the rush out of his own zone. Up to Kuzno on the right side. Josh Kuzno enters the Fayetteville zone. Sean Lynch who will backhand one to Keplinger who scores from behind the net. Josh Keplinger with a wraparound. The puck squeaked by Trevor Gorsuch and Keplinger has just scored his third goal of the season. It's 2-0 make it. That is a much needed power play goal for the Mayhem. They had struggled of late. They had not scored a PPG in six games and they have just broken that spell and have their first insurance lead on the weekend. Five thirty-one yet to be played in the first period. The Mayhem leading the visitors by a 2-0 score. Max Cook, the Fayetteville captain, down the right side, put it in front hoping for a friendly deflection from Marsh. Didn't get it. Marsh, far corner. Sends it back up the boards. Cook could get an opportunity. Spears it at the net. Hayden Stewart is down to the butterfly save. Made it with a stick. And now it's Mike Chamello right side. He will spear it one ahead. Sumalitis guns it after it. Far corner. Off wing. Couldn't center it. Went off the stick of, Dia of uh, Oliveri, rather. Two on one develops. Cook left side. Left circle now. Drops it off to the trailer. Bowen, who sailed his shot over the crossbar. Cook attempted to center it again for Bowen. This time it was picked off by Smith, who strides it out to the neutral zone and dumps it in. He will go to the making bench to complete a change. We're inside of the final five of period uh, period one. The Mayhem with a 2-0 lead. And a whistle blew. I'm not sure why, but Fayetteville might have gotten another penalty. Nicholas Sage was having words with the referee, Nolan Bloyer. It looks as though an interference penalty is going to be called against the marksman. Charles Olson, our public address announcer. 
announcing our Blues Painting and Home Repair hero of the game tonight, Bob Hayes, who uh, served in the U.S. military for 28 years. The man would like to thank Mr. Hayes for his service and remind those of you tuned in that if you'd like to nominate a local hero uh, to a Mayhem game today, visit the Mayhem website, makingmayhem.com. Under the Community tab, you can find where you can nominate uh, a local hero for our Blues Painting and Home Repair hero of the game and treat them to an experience of a lifetime. You can call our office for more information or you can visit our website, makingmayhem.com. So Alec Marsh was the culprit on the interference penalty and the Mayhem going right back to the power play. They just scored on the man advantage moments ago off the stick of Josh Keplinger. Seldom do you see wraparounds go in, but that did. Zach Urban, Sean Lynch, Josh Keplinger. Our half wall, back down to Lynch in the far corner. Returns it to Keplinger, it skitters by his skates, and Urban tries to cover some ground. Breakaway here from McCloy, right down the slot. He shoots, he scores. Taylor McCloy, an uncontested breakaway following a fortuitous Fayetteville bounce, and has just scored his ninth goal of the season, a shorthanded strike for the marksman, and it's now a 2-1 making lead. Josh Keplinger is not going to be happy with himself. Along the far wall, the puck just kind of skittered by his skates. And for a left-handed player on the right wall, it's a little bit more difficult to make plays, and it just squeaked by him. And Zach Urban, as a result, saw the danger. He didn't want a two-on-one to happen, so he covered a lot of ice to try to help out Keplinger. The mayhem caught on an offside here. And the puck squeaked by Urban's stick and just sort of rocketed up towards the Macon blue line. Taylor McCloy was the only one within spitting distance of that puck. He had a, a completely uncontested breakaway from center ice in, really, on Hayden Stewart, who was just beaten for the first time tonight. 4.04 to go in the first period. Fayetteville scoring a shorthanded goal to draw back to within one. Derek Cup. Not often do you see both teams score a shorthanded goal on the same weekend. The marksman could get a two-on-one here. Keelick fires, stopped by Hayden Stewart. The marksmen have had more chances than the Mayhem have on this Macon power play, 59 seconds of which have expired. 3.44 to go in the first period. It's a 2-1 Macon lead. And the Mayhem will take a defensive zone face-off. Steven Pirag to do the honors. It will be countered by Brian Bowen. I beg your pardon, of, by Shane Bednard of Fayetteville. Bednard wins the draw and draws a penalty. It'll be a hook called against Macon. Immediately following the faceoff, and Nolan Bloyer will be sending one of the Mayhem to the box, and we'll head to a four-on-four four for the next 58 seconds. The four-on-four four did not serve the Mayhem well last night. They ended up giving up a go-ahead goal to Check that, it was actually an equalizing goal. To John Gustafson, the go-ahead goal was ultimately scored on the power play by the marksman, by Max Cook. So Pirag to the box. And Macon is now one for two on their power play this evening. So we're on the four on four for the next 52 seconds and then Fayetteville will get an abbreviated power play. Ben Campbell. Goes up the middle, slips by Bednard, then fires a wrist shot wide of the right post. Sean Lynch to the line. Larry Smith coughs it up. It's another breakaway. Bednard down the slot, passes it off. They score. It's Taylor McCloy again. Back-to-back -back goals. He was fed a pass by Bednard, wide open one-timer, virtually a 2-on-0. Larry Smith coughed up the puck at the right point. And it was just Bednard and McCloy. 2-on-0 against Hayden Stewart. And that's going to be a goal almost every time. For the second straight night, the marksmen have scored on the 4-on-4. 3-13 to go in the first, 2-2 here at the centerplex.
Cody Schwartz in his own zone. Brett Johnson skates out with it. He dumps it past Stepan Timofeyev and goes into the far corner, then puts it in front. Hayden Stewart makes a kick save with his left pad. The Mayhem commits a counterattack. Timofeyev turns it over to Brian Bowen. Bowen is pickpocketed. Timofeyev down the left side. He's joined by Kuzno. Timofeyev left circle with a shot blocked by Oliveri. Timofeyev left corner. Couldn't make anything happen. He was surrounded by Fayetteville sweaters. And now Max Cook will skate it down the right wing and drop it to Bowen. Right circle. He fires. Stopped by Stewart. Bowen is back on it. Far corner. Brian Bowen swivels into the slot and shoots. Blocked again. And Larry Smith, or rather Alex D. Oliveira, is wrapped up. Couldn't clear it. Cook put it behind the net. Marsh has it. Alec Marsh up to Travis Jake at the blue line. He will switch with Bowen. Jake to Bowen. Left point back to Jake in the high slot. Down to the circle for Marsh. Right side. Marsh gave it across. Not in the wheelhouse of Max Cook. Bounces off the far corner boards, and the Mayhem have cleared it. 18 seconds remain on this shortened Mayhem penalty kill. Brought to you by J&J's Heating and Air. Stretch pass from the goaltender, Trevor Gorsuch, up to Marsh. Now it's swiveled behind the goal by Bowen. Up to the line for Jake with a one-timer. Missed the left post. Loose puck on the doorstep. The Mayhem have cleared it out. Marcus Ortiz down the left wing, joined by Sumalitas. Will enter the Fayetteville zone and shoot. Punched away by Gorsuch. The Mayhem have returned to full strength and have improved a one-for-one one on their penalty kill tonight. 90 seconds remain in the period. Travis Jake has it behind his own net. He waits. To race it out of his own zone and then floats one into the left corner. That'll be an easy icing call made by the linesman and the Mayhem will get an offensive zone faceoff. Lots of Fayetteville players trying to get away with an illegal line change here. Looks like a couple of them succeeded. Uh, the linesman over there near the Fayetteville bench turned his head. Garrett Cup skating down the tunnel at the moment. And Josh Hoffman, the Macon trainer, is in tow. Not a good sign for the Mayhem defenseman. We'll be sure to keep you folks tuned in, posted on Jarrett Cup's status as we become aware of it. Palowski with a clean offensive zone face-off win, but it couldn't be held to the line by Ben Campbell. He'll just float it back into the left corner. And now it's whacked off the side of the cage dangerously by Oscar Arfelt, nearly put it into his own net. Arfelt's got it again. Oscar Arfelt inside of the trapezoid. Up to Jake on the left side. Now up to Bo McHugh for Fayetteville. It's dumped into the left corner. Smith rolls it around. McHugh cuts it off. Far half wall. Can't make anything happen. And the Mayhem get a counterattack. Dylan Denemy joined by Lynch. Lynch passes it to himself off of a Fayetteville stick on ending the zone, but Lesage gets it right back from him. Slides it around his own end wall. David Palowski trying to make something happen in the waning seconds, 20 of which remain in the period. Josh Victor. Lesage. Across to Bednard. The pass was behind him. And Bednard spins, clears it off the glass. Kuzno settles it, and that'll do it for period one. You two, your score through the first 20 minutes of play. Macon scored the first two, Fayetteville the second two, and we're all level just like we started heading into the first intermission. The Mayhem one for two on their power play. Right now on point streaks, the second one not showing up because it was an abbreviated power play. Um, but Fayetteville had one of their own as well. They did not succeed, but they did score on the four on four. They also scored a shorthanded goal. So really, any time the Mayhem have been either short-handed or on the four-on-four -four situation, Fayetteville, for the most part this weekend, has found a way to score. And it goes without saying, the Mayhem a much better team when they're staying out of the penalty box. And this weekend has been no exception. Those four-on-four -four situations, Fayetteville, and even in the three-on-three, -three, it took all of 14 seconds last night before the Marksman scored. So it seems like the open ice just drastically has favored the marksman this season, or uh, this weekend, I beg your pardon. So 
Steven Pirag opened the scoring, 8-17 in with a slap shot from the right circle. Stathis Sumalitas was given the lone assist, and Josh Keplinger, six minutes later, added a goal on a wraparound. Sean Lynch, David Pulaski getting the assists on that power play strike by Keplinger, which was his third goal of the season. And then Fayetteville uh, roared back within a minute and three seconds. Taylor McLoy scored twice, first on a shorthanded breakaway and then again on a four-on-four, two-on-o set up by Shane Bednard for a uh, really tap-in of a one-timer. The 2-2 two -two is now the score. We're going to head to our uh, first intermission break, folks. When we uh, come back, we're going to break down this game in a little greater detail and take a look around the SBHL. But uh, for now, please enjoy this uh, past Monday morning's radio segment, Creekside with Mayhem forward Stephen Pirog who uh, scored the first goal of this game. That interview with Tony Doolin and 100.9 The Creek is coming your way next on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. Keep it right here, folks. You're listening to Making Mayhem Hockey on SPHL Live, powered by Endeavor Streaming and on YouTube. 2-2 Two -two the score, heading into our first intermission. We'll be back before you know it. Alex Von Coyle, the voice, voice. From Alex Von Coyle, the voice, 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 voice. Alex Von Coyle, my fighter, my Yeah, yeah, that's what we say too. That's right. That's how we look at it too. Yeah, Alex, everyone's having the same reaction for the most part. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Yeah, me too. Let's talk some. Let's talk some hockey from this weekend, Friday night. What a great game, man. Yeah. Straight up, what a great game. Yep. It was our best crowd of the season um, by a pretty good bit. Good. And, and we give we gave them the reward that they deserved. I mean, they were yes. just – that crowd, that atmosphere was just unbelievable on Friday night. And um, that third – or that second period uh, swing in momentum and where I think we scored three goals in less than five minutes mm. and had a fight. And like, Oh, yeah. You can't ask for much more than no, that. No, it was an exciting five <laughs> minutes right there. Offense yep. and a good, a good knockdown? Yeah, it was, and that, that's a good team. Pensacola is a very good team this year. I, I'd put them up there with, uh, you know, Evansville and Fayetteville as the best, they're the most improved teams in our league this season. And their uh, their goalie, I had heard, was an NHL draft pick. Yeah, uh, 2015 San Jose Sharks, Jake Kupski. Yeah, he was uh, he was a tough goalie. So to put three in on him was a nice night Friday night. Yep, it definitely was. And he was he was hot. He was red hot. I mean, yeah. he couldn't solve him at all in the first period, despite I thought playing some pretty good hockey. And then for First half of the second period, nothing, and then all of a sudden, just like that, five minutes, we score three times. Hockey's like that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Saturday night because it was a home-and-home home, uh, over the weekend. Saturday mm -hmm. night, uh, the team played in Pensacola, yeah. uh, which is a tough rink to play in. Yes. By the way, let me introduce our uh, our guest you brought with us. Yeah, uh, yeah we totally haven't done to have that. Yeah. Stephen yeah, Pirog. Hey, uh, hey, guys, how's it going? Team captain for the Mayhem. Thanks for being here this morning. Glad to have you on. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're going to get into your backstory, your Likes your fears, your hopes, your dreams <laughs> in just a little bit. Yeah. But is Pensacola a tough room to play in? Uh, absolutely. Um, that rink, it's, it's foot, they have a very good crowd. Um, they are, they're, I'm pretty sure they're 9 1 and 1 there. Mm. So mm. when we were going in there, they knew, we knew how good they were on the road or at home, and we've been struggling on the road. So going in that game, especially after the travel from last night and playing and the excitement from that game before, we had all the momentum coming in and it was a hard game. We we fought, we battled back and obviously we lost in overtime, but it's a tough place but to still play. still picked up that picked point. Up points. Yeah, yes, that's, exactly. That's important. Yeah, yeah. Three out of four against that against that type of a team and especially where we're at, we looked at it as, an, uh, as a plus for the yes. Oh yeah, final yeah. score Not Saturday night was 2-1. 2-1, uh, yeah. So to keep it to 1-1 one, one in regulation is... Yeah, that's yeah, that. Bell on that. Good, uh, Scored a late goal to force overtime, so that you know again kind of showed the the resolve that this team has, yeah. and not to mention all the players that we were missing. You know, Sumalitis had the flu on Friday night and didn't yeah. even play, and then it sounds like he wasn't quite back up to 100 percent when he played when on he Saturday. When he went out there on Saturday. Yeah, obviously with Cam and Caesar still out, and Soper still in the ECHL. We were missing a lot of our leaders, and. Uh, the fight that the team put up this past weekend was definitely commendable. It was phenomenal. It was yeah. a great game Friday night. We had a blast. Um, let's talk about this weekend. Friday night, uh, we have two games against Fayette, uh, Fayetteville Marksman. 
Yeah. Uh, Friday night puck drop 7.30. is 90s night. Yes, Are sir. you wearing your uh, <laughs> hammer pants, Alex? Mm. <laughs> Come on. I don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a denim suit or anything like that. Mm. I know. The Canadian I, tuxedo I, I like is what you're You know, Al's been recommending that I go over to uh, you know, Goodwill and get some. They've got them so. more than likely. Yeah. You know, I would say yeah. travel mm. over there. Like get a matching something. track suit, something right. like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Something in purples. Yeah, purple think, would be a Alex, great bring color. Out your eyes. Purple? Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. That'd be cool. But give me a preview. Yeah. Give me a preview of uh, Fayetteville. Well, they're, um, like I was saying earlier, a very much improved team from last season. Um, I think they're tied for second in their league right now. Uh, they've got a you know, really good power play. Uh, their coach won a championship in Huntsville a few years ago before he was an assistant there, and he got the head coaching job in Fayetteville after that. Um, so, you know, always a very dangerous team. Uh, they work really hard. And it's going to be a challenge both nights. We haven't been able to beat them yet this season, so definitely a chip on our shoulder going in. Not a bad thing to no, have no. as you're going into these two mm-hmm. games. Saturday night is uh, is Marvel night. Yes, yes, now, it is. I've seen the Marvel jersey. I got a sneak peek at it. Nice. Have you seen it yet? No, Steven? I have not. Oh, <laughs> are you a Marvel fan? I am a huge. Apparently, it's you're really, so going to love this. Yeah. Apparently, it's really, really nice. Steve. Oh, you're Very so going to love this. I'm excited. Are they as good as the Peanuts jerseys? Yes. Really? Yes. That's what he, he came in talking mad smack about they that are. about that Peanuts jersey, like That's, how cool it was. If if they went with the one that mm-hmm. they showed me they were going to go with, yeah, it's as good. It's as good. He actually wants one. Alex, is there a way we can get Tony one of those jerseys? You, Just, can, you can bid on him. Uh, he don't. No, we ain't. No. Well, thank you. No. <laughs> we we're going to talk about that, though. Sucker Alex. punch Charles Olson in the back of the head and take his. I can do that, too. I can do that, too. Speaking of uh, where I learned my fighting skills, Stephen Pierog is here. Good morning, yeah. Stephen. Good morning. Good to have you. Hey, thank you, yeah, man. Tell me about you. Where are you from? I'm from Guelph, Ontario. All right, so uh, I'm going to guess you started playing hockey sometime around the age of three. Yeah, yeah. That seems to be a trend. <laughs> okay. okay. Actually, to be honest, I actually started when I was six. Oh, um, really? Late I bloomer. I wasn't a good skater. I actually hated hockey when I was a kid. Wow. Are you kidding? How could you be a candidate and hate the it, state sport? Uh, my brother was way better than I Ah, than okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So okay. There a little was. intimidation from the brother. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I eventually kind of just grew up with it at a backyard rink, and over the years, I slowly got the skates on. My dad kind of forced it upon me and then one year I kind of just blew up with it. I was the worst player on my house league team and by the end of the year I was the best and then slowly moved up and then began, began to love it. Hold on, I don't want to gloss over something yeah. you said. Did you say you had a backyard God, rink? come on now, we are late. Because that's what I was going to say. Like, a ba- like I got a basketball court in the back of my house. You had a rink yeah. back there? That's those, like having a pool in Florida. Dude, uh, those, Seriously, those you exist. had a backyard rink? Yeah, my, my dad would go out there at 3 in the morning Every night and water the rink. He had wow. three foot boards. He spoiled us when we were kids. So I was on the, I was born in the backyard rink. So oh. <laughs> it's kind of, I was kind of made for this. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna ding the bell on that. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. Let Thank your dad you. know that he got a bell ding on yeah, that. Yeah, he man. does. Wow. That's really strong. So tell me about uh, tell me about your uh, your high school college playing through that. Um, yeah, I got when I was uh, 15, I got drafted into a league called the OHL. Uh, I had to move when I was 16. Actually, I was 17 when I first made the team. I had to move from, away from home, a place called Peterborough. I got drafted there. I played there for two and a half years. I uh, went to school there. went to high school. So I tr- transferred back from Guelph to Peterborough for high school. So I kind of went to two high schools in one year at the same time. Wow. So wow. The right, transition. Right, hold on. Pause, 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 pause. Pause. I don't want to go on. We, so we got more either. questions. Yeah, yeah. You got drafted to play hockey. While you were in high school, so you had to change high schools to finish out where you were drafted playing hockey. Exactly. Wow. So, and guess that makes prom difficult. <laughs> Never went to prom. Yeah, didn't. Wow. I was, bro. I was always had a game, busy. man. Come on. What are, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. And then I got traded from Peterborough to Guelph. Um, played for my hometown in the OHL. We ended up winning a, a championship down okay. there, so it was pretty exciting. That's probably one of the biggest moments of my life. And, um, yeah, I just grew up there and then slowly got, I went into pro hockey. Uh, tell me how you ended up in Macon because you were here for the championship team. Um, yeah, I, four or five years ago, Kevin Kerr, he was a head coach here a while ago, he just gave me a call. I was struggling in an injury when I was in Evansville when they were in the ECHL, so I came home to recover and he just gave me a call and he said I had a good opportunity here and he would give me a lot of ice time and help me rebuild and get my pro career started and, I trusted him, and when I got here, the team was struggling a bit, but we ended up making the playoffs, had a good run for it, and the following year, we had a hell of a team, and we went, yeah. went the whole way. So listening to him was a big part of my pro career yeah. start. Now you left for a while. Where'd you go? 
Sorry? You left for a while. Where'd you go? Greenville. Oh, yeah. I went to Greenville. Well, actually, uh, I went to Atlanta first. Um, they were the first ECHL team to kind of give me a chance. And I was back and forth with them. They kept calling me up. I kept getting called down. Guys were coming in and out of the lineup. And then uh, the coach liked me there, so I stayed for the rest of the year. And then Kevin Kerr got the job in uh, Greenville, so mm. I played there for a year. It was a great opportunity for me to experience the ECHL, how that is. And it was a great opportunity, and it was fun. But I wanted to come back here for this year. I had a lot of good options here and kind of different role playing around here. Like, obviously, I came back here and being more of a leader, and I thought that would be the best opportunity for yeah. me. So I came here, and I will be here all year. I'm not going to be taking up any call-ups or anything. I just want to stick it out here and see how it goes. Well, uh, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. You're a fan favorite. And uh, <laughs> whenever uh, everyone found out you were coming back, there was a lot of cheer. <laughs> a lot of whispers. Uh, I, do, I, did, I did some kind of reveal here on the show, I want to say, over the offseason. Yes, I believe. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 That was a big deal, right. man. Definitely so uh, glad to have yeah. you back. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you a uh, personal question. As team captain, uh, with obvious, uh, you know, obviously with the coaching change uh, at the start of the season, was that a tough transition? And, and, and how did you kind of view your role in all of that with Coach Michael stepping up from assistant? Well, it was tough because Leo Thomas was – a good friend to me. He he was my assistant coach when I was here three or four years ago. Um, he was like almost like a brother to me. So it was obviously tough seeing him leave, and he he knows so much. He has so much knowledge about the game, and but it was just yeah, that's how business works, right? So yeah. when he left, um, Michael's had a lot of a lot of weight on his shoulders, and I just came up to him and I told him whatever I could do to help, please do, because yeah. I came here to be a leader and to also learn the coaching side. So I looked at it as even though it was a sad thing, but it was also a a little bit of an opportunity for me to come into play and show them what I can what I can do, what I can help out. And Ryan is a professional at what he does, and he hands off things that he thinks I can handle. And it's been a good learning curve for me too, yeah. and a good leadership role I need to bring in. So I think it was a it was a bad thing at the start, but slowly we're coming together and we're fixing it. So. Yeah, as we said off air, it really feels like the team is gelling. And I want to talk about the. Uh, we just broke a uh, franchise record for five straight home wins. Yeah, we had never done that before. What um, is that? Yep. Um, it was. Yeah, we're about that. We're about for that. Now you guys tied the record a few weeks ago against Birmingham when you won a, our last home game of 2019. Um, I think we had won four straight only twice previously on home ice, and uh, now that uh, we've won five, that's a franchise record. Never oh, yeah. done that before. Every win has been by a single goal too, so we're winning the close games, which is which huge. is good, very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about, uh, speaking of being a uh, team captain and a leader, I want to talk about your four-minute penalty on uh, Friday well, I night. Mean, you know. <laughs> well, we were talking off air, and I really love what you said. You said, um, you know, because it was after uh, Schmelo got boarded, yeah. who, by the way, is back now. Mm -hmm. um, he got boarded pretty, uh, pretty handily. Yeah. And what was going through your mind when that happened? Um, he got smacked. Well, I always look, I always look for when I'm on the ice for, like, big hits or things to – Kind of sparked the play. I it was just I just saw in the per, my peripheral vision that him getting hit and his helmet came off. It was a two on one. Yeah, two guys wanted to finish their check and it was pretty oh, wow. high. And I saw him go down. And my natural reaction is to kind of just stick up and see what, just to go to the pile or just go to the problem and see what's going to happen. And he just looked straight in the eye, and I looked him in the eye, and it was just a natural reaction. To, <laughs> it's about to, to go down. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much. It's, not, it's a part of the game. It's, yeah. it's something that needs yeah. to happen. And if I've been in that scenario millions of times, so I've kind of been experienced with it. So it was just uh, not. It was just a reaction for me to go to his aid when he needed to. And I think the the fans liked it a lot. And uh, it was kind of a galvanizing a moment for the fans. <laughs> it brought everybody the together again. <laughs> As someone who was in the stands when that happened, kind of a galvanizing moment. Just going to say that. Yeah. Well, it was. To be honest, it was actually kind of a bad time to do it. We were winning kind of momentum change or two. It could go either way. Yeah, true, true, true. So I took a risk there, but I'm glad I took the risk. Glad it worked yeah. out that way. So. Well, you kind of solicited a little bit of crowd reaction <laughs> as you're coming off the ice. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were all looking at me, so I thought they <laughs> <laughs> Get up, Megan. Come on. <laughs> now, it was a great game Friday night, and uh, congratulations on uh, where the team's going. You know, a lot of that has to do with leadership, and as uh, team captain, got your own exactly. building. Exactly. Alex? <laughs> 
Good to see you. You too. Yeah, Don't both. forget Thank Friday night and us. Saturday night. Friday night, 7.30, puck drop. Saturday at 7. Yeah, jersey auction after the game's yeah. over for those Get specialty Marvel jerseys. Yeah, you wouldn't tell me uh, which player is uh, possibly getting announced this He's week. He's not going to do you it. You will see it. Either. I'm not going to tell you what the jersey looks like. Uh, <laughs> It's either today or tomorrow where you'll find out. You said, right. When I find out, you find out. goes for everyone tuned in. Fine. Be that way. <laughs>
the chess save. Stewart playing in his first game on home ice this season. The Cor Cornell University grad was uh, very strong in his Mayhem debut one week ago in Pensacola down at the hangar. He stopped 40 of the 42 shots he faced. A Rockford, Illinois native. He made a very impressive debut for the Mayhem, and the fans here were eager to see what he could do on home ice. And he's been solid tonight. Unfortunately, he was really just kind of hung out to dry on both of Fayetteville's goals. One was a breakaway from Taylor McCloy, who's second on the marksman in goals. The next was a 2-on-0 with Taylor McCloy and Shane Bednard. So you can't really fault Hayden Stewart for either of those goals. Just two uh, poorly timed pinches by the mayhem, which resulted in those uh, situations. So here's Josh Kuzno firing it in from center. It's absorbed by Trevor Gorsuch. That was... Wojtek Zemlitska, rather, firing from the Mayhem logo in the neutral zone. 19-12 to go in the second period. We're tied, <coughs> tied at two goals apiece here in middle Georgia. And Sean Lynch is going to take this face off to the left of Gorsuch. Some miscommunication between the marksman forwards. Everybody's switching around. And finally, Tim Keelick decides to step up to face off against Sean Lynch and ends up beating him. Gustafson, who scored a pair of goals last night, turns it over in front. Lynch tried to go five hole, but a pad save was made by Gorsuch, who got down to the butterfly quickly. And now Travis Jake will slip his way across the Macon blue line and slap a pass across, hoping for Keelick. Went off a Macon skate. And Sean Lynch is able to punch one out to Dylan Denemy. A goal and an assist last night for number 96. For Macon, Dylan Denemy made a very impressive return to the Macon Centerplex last night. Played his first game in this building in nearly two years. Had a goal and a primary helper on Ortiz's team leading 11th goal of the season. The Mayhem going to work in the attacking zone. A diving keep a, uh, succeeds as Keplinger went down, lost his stick, gets back onto it, and stays on the ice after recovering his loose piece of lumber in the neutral zone. Travis Jake again waiting for his team to complete a forward line change as he maintains possession behind his own net amidst a rain of boo birds here at the centerplex. Jake steps out from behind his own goal line and sends it up to his captain, Max Cook. Cook dishes it to his left. Alex Marsh put it over the Macon blue line. Brian Bowen picks up the loose puck, goes down, tumbling into the corner. The Mayhem looks to take advantage of that as Timofeyev is sprung down the right side, flutters the, pack, the puck over to Lynch, who gains it and fires. Missed the right post with a shot. Urban's follow-up bid is off the mark, and now Timofeyev will go after it far half wall. Gets help from the blue line by Wojtek Zemlitska, but the marksmen punch it out. They get a two-on-one. Bowen, right wing, put it over, hoping for Marsh, broken up by Urban. Stout defensive play, and here come the mayhem on a counterattack. Pulowski just rims it in. He and his team were in the middle of a line change. 17-28 to go in the second period. 2-2 your score. Alex Von Koto, the voice of your mayhem, happy to have you with us tonight, folks, on Marvel Superhero Night at the Macon Centerplex. It's the final game for the next couple of weeks in this building. Steven Pirog puts on the brakes to the left point and fires a shot on net that's steered aside by Trevor Gorsuch and into the near corner. And Mike Chamello stepped in to try to uh, center it. It was broken up by Brett Johnson. And he will get a return from Shane Bednard that was not in his wheelhouse. He had a stick wrapped up, didn't really have a wheelhouse in that situation. Now Sage, risky pinch. Chamello, right side, takes it wide and centers it. Here's a chance. They can't bury it. Good save by Gorsuch. Mike Chamello couldn't make the marksman pay for that pinch. Johnson, left side, fired it off the left end of the net. It'll be ricocheted back to the point. Nicholas Sage tees it up and sends it to Bednard in the left circle. Shane Bednard wheels up to the slot and fires. It gets blocked and ultimately hacked wide by Bo McHugh. Making his return to Fayetteville after a five-game stint in the ECHL with the Greenville Swamp Rabbits, the Carolina Hurricanes affiliate. The Mayhem have just cleared it all the way down. This will be an icing called against Macon. 16-18 to go in the second. We're tied at two goals apiece. Nicholas Sage caught in a near-costly scenario at the left point. Mike Chamello just burst by him and had a three-on-one, and the pass found the trailer, but he was in a little bit too tight by the time the puck reached him. Chamello wisely took it wise, or took it wide rather, to make sure that the pass worked out and didn't get broken up, which would have resulted in no shot on goal. So a smart play by Chamello, but it came at a price, and the price was uh, the shot was taken too close to the goaltender, and as a result, there wasn't much elevation on it. 
Travis Jake pursues a wobbling puck in his own zone. The reigning SPHL Defenseman of the Year, Boston College graduate, takes it out of his own zone and from the red line will shovel it deep into Macon territory. Off the right corner boards, it bounces and Jarrett Cup spins from McCloy. McCloy puts it in front. Sean Lynch is first there. Pops one free for Dylan Denemy and joins Denemy on the rush. Denemy will float one into the right corner where it's pursued by Lynch and the marksmen get to it before Lynch could and now it's John Gustafson, former Mayhem a uh, sniper will take it down the left side. Gustafson from the left half wall. Knocked off balance by Dylan Denemy. Kuzno, Denemy, McCloy all in a scrap for it. Alex de Oliveira ends up with it and will punch it out to Lynch. The pass finds Kuzno off the carom on the near side wall in front of the ba uh, penalty boxes. Kuzno tries to step into the middle. Lost it to Josh Victor. Kielik. Long stretch pass, finds Alec Marsh onside, joined by Bowen, two on one. Marsh with a toe drag, takes it in behind, tries to tuck it in. Lost the puck at the last second. The Mayhem catch a break. Here's Marcus Ortiz. Slips it over the blue line. Pulaski will put it in below the Fayetteville goal line, then steals it. Pulaski near circle turns and fires his shot blocked by Nicholas Sage. Smith goes in behind the net. Flings the pass up the slot all the way back out to the neutral zone. It slides. Ben Campbell had his pass broken up by Max Cook. Cook is closed off by Smith defensively. And Marsh receives the pass from Brian Bowen in the near corner. He'll put it behind the net. Bowen's got it. He throws it up the slot as well. It misses Cook. Goes all the way down. Out of his net to play it is Trevor Gorsuch, the marksman netminder. He's flushed out of there by Josh Keplinger, but the marksman elude Keplinger's presence. And now it's Johnson down the left wing. Wojtek Zemlitska took a swipe at it, and the Czech defenseman got rid of it, put it behind his own net before taking a big hit. Now Matt Robertson in contention with it against Zach Urban, who's giving plenty of pushes and shoves to a much smaller opponent in Brett Johnson. Then Johnson threw a cross-check at Urban's face. Both parties got away with it because Nolan Bloyer was looking the other way. 13.54 to go in the second period. 2-2 is your score. Zemlitska heads to the making bench as a scrap takes place below the Fayetteville cage. Escaping with it, Don Oliveri for the marksman. He will bounce one down the left side, and it's slipped further by Shane Bednard. Oliveri leaves it. Bednard coughs it up to Timofeyev, who can't escape with it. Bednard gets it back. Far corner, wheels in behind the net, then centers. Quick shot, save, rebound, second save by Stewart. A couple of huge stops, the last of which was on Matt Robertson. The Mayhem have cleared it. Timofeyev down the right wing. Joined by Jarrett Cup on the rush. Timofeyev centers it. Here's a shot by Sumolitis. Hits the crossbar. It stays out. Picked up by McCloy in the far corner. He gets the pass up ice from Don Oliveri and enters the making zone. Right circle will fire. Shoulder saved by Stewart. Frantic action at both ends of the ice here in early period two. Tim Keelick, Travis Jake, a lot of room. He fires. Ricochet on net. Stopped by Hayden Stewart. My goodness. Seven minutes have expired. I'm not sure we've had so much as a whistle through the first seven minutes of period two. And we get a chance to catch our breath as we head to our first media timeout of the middle stanza, if I'm not mistaken. Steph Asumalitis coming inches away from regaining Macon's lead. It would have been a huge goal. He was set up by Stepan Timofeyev. Last night it was the opposite. Stepan Timofeyev set up by Sumalitis for the game-tying goal, which ultimately forced overtime. And Sumalitas just rang it off the inside of the crossbar. It bounced out and was just inches away from regaining Macon's lead. Sumalitas for the second consecutive season sporting an A on his sweater. Last season played in 17 games in the ECHL between the Florida Everblades and the Norfolk Admirals. He's had an assist in three consecutive games. And his last two assists have resulted in, directly resulted in the Mayhem getting a point. First in Pensacola and then last night in Macon. His assist in Pensacola came on David Pulowski's goal in the closing minutes, which forced overtime in a very difficult building. Bowen's shot off the draw, Karam's off a Macon body, and Alex de Oliveira will wrap one around the boards out past Travis Jake, who's going to have to skate back after it in his own zone and punch it along to Cody Schwartz. The German-born defenseman can't get it out of his own zone. He gets some help from Alec Marsh, who wheels behind his own net. 
Marsh, Fayetteville's OT hero from yesterday. Slips one through to Max Cook and across the blue line. Put it into the right corner, Brian Bowen. Fayetteville's top unit trying to get something happen or make something happen here in the Macon zone. Jarrett Cup. Good to see him back out there after a scare in the first period. He is hit pretty hard by Cook into the near corner boards. Cook comes away with it, sends it over. Quick shot stopped by Stewart. Cody Schwartz with the wrist shot from above the right circle. Had an assist in his marksman debut one week ago. Dual Canadian and German citizenship. Did not play last season. Spent the previous year in Germany's second league. But this is his first pro campaign in North America. Marksman will take an offensive zone faceoff. Jesse Kalecki has switched his lines. He sent his uh, second line out there. Shane Bednar to take the offensive zone faceoff. Hugging the wall, far side, Matt Robertson. The Mayhem come away with it. Flung off the near side boards in front of the boxes. Settled by Ben Campbell. A Duluth, Minnesota native. Gave it over to Larry Smith. Smith up to Palowski, who dumps it into the right corner. Marcus Ortiz is first there. He will put it behind the net. Palowski is checked. He tried to get it to Keplinger in front of the marksman net. Right now the puck rattles into the right corner on the near side. The marksman failed to clear it. Good keep. Campbell swats at it. Down the slot it rolls, but it's scooped up by Oscar Arfelt, and the Swedish defenseman gets it out of harm's way for the time being. Keplinger will drop it beyond Smith's reach and down to Hayden Stewart, who will steer it aside in the near corner. And Ben Campbell shovels it high off the glass. It'll land near the red line, pursued by Ortiz. Played first by Lesage, who makes a clear hand pass. Does not get away with it. The whistle blows. And this faceoff will come into the Fayetteville zone. 11.23 to go in the second period. 2-2 is your score at the Macon Centerplex. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, folks, on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. We're so glad to have you with us tonight on SBHL Live, powered by Endeavor Streaming and on YouTube. Alex Von Coyle, the voice of your Macon Mayhem. Thrilled to be bringing you live coverage of Macon's penultimate home game against Fayetteville this season. They've got one last chance, if they do not win tonight, to salvage a victory against the Marksmen on home ice this season. A building they've historically been very good against the Marksmen in. Don Oliveri lost it to Stepan Timofeyev. Gustafson turned it over at center ice. Sumalitas put it back into the Fayetteville zone. Oliveri up to McCloy. He's got both of the marksman's goals. His pass went off the stick of Pirog, but it bounced fortuitously right back to him. He'll then backhand it across to Don Oliveri, whose shot is blocked by Zemlitska's stick. Zemlitska looked like he might have slashed Oliveri, got away with it. A puck battle ensues, and behind the Macon goal line, Keelick pinned up by Zach Urban for the time being. Oliveri begins to backpedal and switches places with Taylor McCloy. Puck comes loose. McCloy gets his stick in there. Pirog comes away with it, dives to get it past Kielik. Sumalitas is joined by Timofeyev on a two-on-two. -two. Jake defends Sumalitas, who twists a backhand pass on the tape. Urban tees it up, fires, and it's waffleboarded by, uh, by uh, Trevor Gorsuch, who makes a nice save with his blocker. What a beautiful pass by Stathis Sumalitas. That was uh, Patrick Kane-like, or Savardian, depending on which era you prefer. Tim Kielik backhands it out into the neutral zone. Jarrett Cup has it at his own blue line and slides it over to Alex D'Oliveira, the ex Peoria Riverman and Quad City Storm defenseman. Kuzno, right side for Macon. Drop to Lynch. He shoots. Glove save by Gorsuch. And we have crossed the halfway point of regulation. 9.59 to go in the second. 2 2 is your score here at the Macon Centerplex. We hope you're enjoying the game, folks. We're going to take a brief pause on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. We're halfway through regulation, both teams with a pair of goals. And we'll be back in just a moment. We're going to take a brief pause for the cause on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. Family 4-Pack is back. The Mayhem are offering this incredibly affordable package for several games throughout the season. For just $50, you receive four tickets and a $30 gift card to Texas Roadhouse at 5080 Riverside Drive right here in Macon. The dates for these four-pack nights will be announced on social media as they become finalized. So be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for all the most up-to-date content. So we didn't get around to uh, giving an out-of-town school board update after the, or during the uh, first intermission, so we're going to do our best to give you a quick one now. Again, the Quad City Peoria game was canceled tonight due to 
uh, inclement weather, so that game will not take place. Pensacola and Evansville about to be underway down at the hangar. Huntsville and Knoxville also in the pregame. Birmingham uh, hosting the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. Also a Central Standard Time puck drop, so uh, really not much to update in terms of our out-of-town scoreboard update. So you didn't miss too much during the first intermission. Meanwhile, we're back here at the Macon Centerplex. Marsh gives it to Jake down the slot. He shoots, stopped by Stewart. Excellent save on a very dangerous defenseman. Jake sends it back to Schwartz. His shot tipped on goal, stopped by Stewart. Loose puck in the slot, backhanded, blocked by Cup. Whacked into the corner, near side of the ice. It's hacked at and whacked at every which way by Denemy, trying to clear it, but Alec Marsh seals the boards, cuts it off. Bowen comes away with it in the slot, loves to pull the trigger from there, but Denemy won't allow him to do so. He has to just has, have no choice but to just take it wide and put it behind the net. And Max Cook, stick handling in a phone booth, finally turns it over, and the Mayhem have cleared the danger. It's played ahead for Denemy, who redirects it into the Fayetteville zone. Travis Jake able to outskate him to the puck. 9.07 to go in the second. The Mayhem eluding a dangerous situation moments ago against Fayetteville's top guns. Jake has it behind the Fayetteville cage. SPHL and scoring among defensemen last season. He sauces it into making ice, and Larry Smith gets there first. It's accelerated by Ben Campbell and punched further by Keplinger. Here comes David Palowski. He will lead it back to Stepan Timofeyev. Timofeyev to Campbell in the right circle. He slips away from a check and fires. It gets blocked. We're seeing a lot more and more of that from Ben Campbell of late. Shane Bednard gives it up the right wing. Oscar Arfelt back to Bo McHugh. This shot doesn't get through. It was blocked by Pawlowski, who breaks his stick. Blade completely separated from the rest of that stick, and it's down there near the Coca-Cola dashers on the far side of the ice. In the, meanwhile, in the meantime, a puck battle ensues. Stepan Timofeyev wins it and gets it out to the Mayhem logo in the neutral zone, where it's gloved down by Oscar Arfelt. The Mayhem in the midst of a line change. This is the period of the line of the long change, so both teams have got to be careful when they time these changes. Larry Smith hoists it out to center. Sumalitis lurking at the opposing blue line, gets the pass from Smith, then puts it in front. Redirects just wide of the left post. That was inches away from regaining Macon's lead. Sumalitis with a couple of close calls in this period, but we remain tied up at two goals apiece. Pirag sends it over to Zemlitska. The pass was too hot to handle. Zemlitska is closed off. Good body positioning by Matt Robertson. Here come the marksmen. Left side, it's going to be pursued by Brett Johnson to nullify a potential icing call. Pirog scoops up the loose puck. Can't get it by Taylor McCloy, who blocked it. Didn't know where it was, but found it. McCloy is a hat trick candidate tonight. He's got a pair of goals. Marksman's only two goals this evening. The puck is loosened behind the Macon cage. Whacked to the far half wall. Sumalitas has just uh, hoisted it out into neutral territory. Don Oliveri goes down to a knee and coughs it up. It's turned over. McCloy sends it to Marsh. Right side, Alec Marsh driving. Tries to tuck it in. Stewart came up big with a pad save. He's played excellent tonight in goal for the Mayhem. Now it's Jake firing. Stewart, a butterfly save. Sean Lynch met by heavy resistance from Tim Keelick. The Macon bench. Lynch has just dumped it into the Fayetteville zone. 6.38 to go in the second period. 2-2 is your score. Long stretch pass finds Marsh. He will center it to Cook. Left circle. Gave it away to D'Olivera. Now here come the mayhem, Dylan Denemy down the right side, one against two. Some late help coming in the form of Alex D'Olivera, but the pass was intercepted by Jake. Jake will feed it over to Cody Schwartz. A long pass to Alec Marsh, right side, outer hash marks, right circle. He hangs onto it and dips in behind the making net. Alec Marsh will send it up to Schwartz from the right circle, whose shot is kicked away by Hayden Stewart with the right pad. It's hay bailed out of the making zone. Out towards the opposing blue line, Travis Jake falls down and wanted a tripping penalty, none was called. Max Cook, right wing side, drops it to Alec Marsh. Marsh will shoot from a tough angle. Stick saved by Stewart. Whacked with a high stick by Marsh. Didn't touch the puck, but the whistle blew regardless. 5.50 to go in the second period. It's still 2-2, and that loose puck, or that loose stick, rather, that belonged to David Palowski was finally picked up. It had been down there for several minutes in the far corner of the Macon zone. Hayden Stewart has made it some outstanding saves in this game, folks. The bulk of the scoring chances in this period for Fayetteville have been stopped because of Stewart. The bulk of Macon's scoring chances have been stopped because of poor puck luck. 
And the puck either just missing a post or just going off a post and staying out. Check Zemlitska. Sends it over to Larry Smith. Smith up to Timofeyev, who kicked it into the Fayetteville zone. It was a crucial kick to prevent an icing from happening. 5.28 to go in the second. 2-2 to your score. At Robertson, the ex-Mayhem able to put it behind his own net. Oscar Arfelt's pass goes beyond everybody. Larry Smith's got a hustle. He's got John Gustafson in tow. No icing. Gustafson and Smith wrapped up with one another near the ortho-Georgia dashers in the far corner. Bouncing puck is going to be handled by Nicholas Sage and given across to Don Oliveri, who loses it to Timofeyev. Nice move. Timofeyev to the goal. He put it over the crossbar. Step on Timofeyev up to the right point for Ben Campbell, who walks into the deep slot with it. Redistributes it. Timofeyev, he put it across, hoping for a tap-in from Pirog. It went off a Fayetteville stick. Urban gave it to Pirog, centering pass, whacked aside, and ultimately cleared off the stick of Urban. Played in neutral territory by Urban. He will slide it to Campbell on his right. Ben Campbell steps in across the blue line, tries to slip one through the Fayetteville defense. It finds Ortiz in the right corner. He is brought down, no penalty. The marksman will commence a counterattack near the end of a shift. They've got some tired bodies. Urban gloves down the clearing attempt, and here comes Don Oliveri. Oliveri left circle, fires, kick save by Hayden Stewart. Excellent stop with his left pad. And now it's Brett Johnson from the far corner. Johnson above the right circle now. We'll switch places with Travis Jake and feed him the pass. Jake sets up a shot from the right point that's caught by Hayden Stewart and will take a whistle, stopping play. 4.03 to go here in period two. 2-2 two, two your score at the Macon Centerplex. We'll be back in just a moment, folks. Try, trying to plan out a night of fun for an upcoming birthday? Why not spend it right here with the Mayhem? The Tommy's Bakery and Cafe Birthday Suite is available right here at the Macon Centerplex for all home games during the 2019-20 season. The birthday suite comes chock full of benefits, including 12 tickets, a private suite area with a great view of the ice, donuts from Tommy's Bakery, a visit from Mac the mascot, and a special present for the birthday child. All of this for just $250, with additional tickets available for $12 each. Visit MaconMayhem.com or call our office for more information. So that was our final media timeout of period two. We've still got a 2-2 tie. It's quite remarkable that that's the case. It seemed like there were have been just as many, if not more, scoring chances in this period than there were in period one. And yet, in the first period, there were four goals scored, and we're 16 minutes into this stanza, there still hasn't been one. Yet another close game. I hate to say we told you so, but we did before this game started. Obviously, still plenty of time left for that to change one way or the other, but the past three times these teams have met, all of which have been in this building this season, it has been decided by a single goal. Fayetteville in four consecutive games have gone to overtime. Pirog chases down a loose puck in behind the Fayetteville net. He loses an edge, and Cody Schwartz was there. He's able to punch it out to his right for Max Cook. Cook gets the return from Marsh in stride. Enters making ice, and Brian Bowen will slap it back to Cook inside of the making trapezoid. Marsh will scoop up the loose puck from the near corner. Marsh up to the line, sets up Schwartz, head faking a shot, and a glove save by Stewart, who lands on the rebound and covers it atop the crease. He has been outstanding tonight. The only two goals the marksman scored were really goals in which you cannot fault the netminder in the slightest. And outside of the breakaway and the two-on-o goal that were scored by Taylor McCloy within a 63-second span, late in period one, Hayden Stewart has stopped everything. Far circle shot immediately after a face-off win by the marksman taken by Robertson was blocked. That flying puck has been brought to you by Blues Painting and Home Repair. We've got 3.27 to go in the second period. Still deadlocked in a 2-2 stalemate at the Macon Centerplex. Matt Robertson, former Mayhem player, played here during the inaugural year. Older than the Marksman's head coach. He's 31 years of age. A former Louisiana ice skater and Fayetteville fire ant. This is his 11th professional season. 
battle takes place along the Fayetteville end wall. Josh Victor is down, slow to get back up, and Cousineau went down as well, and the marksmen are out to center ice with it. Robertson plays the puck back through. Bo McHugh chases it in the far corner. He's able to whack one in behind the net. Robertson wobbles it up to the line. It squeaks past Bednard at the point. He has to recover it near his own blue line now. Shane Bednard angles it up to the Macon blue line. Cup slides it to D'Olivera on his right. D'Olivera banks it off the boards. It's intercepted. Here come the marksmen. They're on side. Bednard swivels into the right circle, twists it back. Here's a shot by Oliveri. Kicked away by Entma. Nice save. And it's played by D'Olivera. Thrown ahead, Dylan Denemy. Crosses over the marksman blue line. Did well to stay on side. David Pawlowski turns it over. Here comes Taylor McCloy, who overskated it, and the, as a result, an offside whistle is blown against the marksman. 2.17 to go in the second. 2-2 your score. Taylor McHugh, extremely dangerous. He came bursting down the left wing with a full head of steam. He's got both of Fayetteville's goals tonight. One on a short-handed breakaway, and then another on a four-on-four, two-on-o situation. Here, I'm to take the face off in front of the All-State bonding penalty box. Wins it cleanly against Max Cook. Two of them sort of counterparts. Both captains, both leading the team, their teams in assists this season. Stathasumalitis guns down a loose puck. He will drop it to. Stepan Timofeyev, right half wall. He will slide it back to the point. Larry Smith tees up a shot, and it's stopped. There was a rebound on the doorstep, and here's a breakaway for Fayetteville. Brian Bowen down the slot. Bowen to the backhand, shoots, and scores. Hayden Stewart was indecisive as to whether to come out and challenge that shot from Brian Bowen, who's Fayetteville's leading goal scorer. Now the SBHL's leading goal scorer with his 16th of the season. Has given the marksman their first lead of the game. With 111 seconds remaining in period two, it's 3-2 Fayetteville. I can conclusively say that's probably the first mistake Hayden Stewart's made all night. He didn't want to be too aggressive, it seemed like. And it's, it's easy to uh, <laughs> make judgment calls from way up here in the press box, but it, it seemed to me like if he came out without hesitation, he would have been able to knock that puck away from Brian Bowen but did not want to risk it and ended up getting beaten on the backhand from Bowen. So the Marksmen have their first lead of this game. It's 3-2 Fayetteville. And the Mayhem find themselves trailing by a single goal. All too familiar situation when playing against this team. And now the Mayhem are going to the penalty box. Kayla McCloy drawing a holding penalty. Boy has really just been a mayhem killer here tonight. He's scored two of their three goals and has drawn their second power play. Wojtek Zemlitska will be heading to the Beyond Taboo Tattoo penalty box. Only a minute 25 remains in the second period. If the unless the marksmen score, they will play the rest of this second period on the man advantage. Alec Marsh to take a pretty rare face off. And the mayhem end up with it. Jarrett Cup from his backhand is able to clear it by Bowen. Here's a chance for Sumulitas to the forehand. Shoots, sprawling pad saved by Gorsuch. Sumulitas found the puck behind enemy lines following that clearing attempt by Jarrett Cup. Wouldn't that have been something? Macon's first shorthanded goal in over a year came last night. They nearly had another one in back-to-back -back fashion. Sumulitas has been snake-bitten more than anybody in this second period. Max Cook enters the Macon zone. Lynch to Cup. He's again cleared it out. Sumulitas is lurking near Travis Jake. He will scoop it up at the bottom of the right circle. Waits for some help. Jake takes him into the near corner and off the puck. Three marksmen surrounding Sumulitas, digging away, trying to uh, spring that puck loose. Campbell steps into the slot, just missed the blocker side post. Jake loses his helmet. Sumulitas is checked into the far half wall. And here comes Max Cook for Fayetteville. He will enter the Macon zone, leave it to Alec Marsh in the far half wall. Marsh's pass finds Gustafson, who fires. Getting just a piece of it with the glove was Hayden Stewart. Ortiz steals the puck and floats it over to Steven Pirog. Could be a three on two for the Mayhem. Pirog left side, drops it to Smith, who overskates it, gets back on it, and sends it over 
off the back skate of Pirog. Now a counterattack for Fayetteville. Marsh down the left wing. Alec Marsh loses the, uh, runs out of time rather, and that's done it for period two. A couple of uh, pretty good scoring chances for the Mayhem shorthanded in the last minute here. Stathis Sumalitis with a partial breakaway. He made the move he wanted to, but just couldn't elevate the puck over the stretched pad of Trevor Gorsuch, who robbed him with the right leg. So for the first time tonight, the Mayhem are trailing. They are down by a goal. 3-2 Marksman heading into the second intermission. Last night was the first time the Mayhem secured a point on home ice when going into the third period with a deficit. When trailing after two this season, the Mayhem are 0-11-2. At home, they are 0-5-1. So uh, obviously when you look at the stats, from that point of view, things are not looking the most optimistic, but the good news is it's only a goal. Plenty of time remains for the Mayhem to find one. And Fayetteville um, coming away, the victors in that second period, despite uh, really the fact that it could have been either of those teams who came away with a substantial lead. Uh, a bit surprising that only one goal was scored in that 20-minute segment. It was just so chaotic on both sides of the ice. Just Especially in the opening few minutes, it felt like just... Uh, very high-end scoring chances on both fronts. And whether it was a, an enormous save made by Hayden Stewart or by Trevor Gorsuch, or a fortunate bounce off of a post or a crossbar, or the puck just missing the net by inches. Whatever the case was, the pucks were just not falling in. And the Mayhem are going to have to find a way to exercise their demons in period three. Again, 3-2 your score in favor of Fayetteville. Before we head to our second intermission uh, to, uh, break, we're, we're going to take a look around the SPHL for our Hampton and Suites Out of Town scoreboard update. Every team in this league, besides the Mayhem, playing in the Central Standard Time Zone tonight. So uh, that's sort of the result of these delayed starts. Birmingham has just gotten underway a few minutes ago. Same with Huntsville and Pensacola. The only score to report from any of those games is Pensacola-Evansville. The Ice Flyers lead the Thunderbolts by a 1-0 margin. They won last night by a 4-0 score down at the Pensacola Bay Center. And Birmingham, Roanoke in the first six minutes. Huntsville, Roanoke in the first five or six minutes without a score. That wraps up your out-of-town scoreboard update presented by Hampton Inn and Suites. Oh, and then, of course, the game between the Peoria Rivermen and the Quad City Storm, as we mentioned earlier, was canceled due to a dangerous winter storm taking place across the Midwest. So I know we've got some viewers out there tonight who are tuned in from the Midwest. To those of you out there who are uh, listening to tonight's game, please stay safe. I uh, know from firsthand experience how brutal those storms can be. So uh, please do all that you can to uh, stay safe and stay indoors as the storm passes. And we've got our own uh, pretty rough weather here in Macon tonight. Uh, it's uh, nothing compared to what's going on up in uh, in Quad City tonight, but certainly enough to repel some of the folks away from the Macon Centerplex. It's just pretty ugly here. It will be for the next few days. Pretty heavy winds and a lot of rain from now until midweek next week, it looks like. So as we head to our second intermission break, folks, we're going to play back uh, our last episode of Line Change with Mayhem head coach Ryan Michael. We didn't get to play back the full episode on the uh, during the second intermission last night. So we're going to play it from roughly the midway point of the show from last Tuesday night. Again, every, every Tuesday night at the Rookery. Weeknights with Coach Ryan Michael and two player guests. Uh, I'll be there with the th with uh, Coach Michael and the two guests every week, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we, if you can't make the show, we obviously archive them on our YouTube channel shortly afterwards. So please enjoy this, this next excerpt from our last episode of Line Change, Episode 9, the first episode of the 2020 uh, annual year and first of the decade with the Mayhem head coach Ryan Michael. And player gets Josh Keplinger and Ben Campbell. That's coming your way next on the Mayhem Broadcast Network, folks. 3-2 Fayetteville, hear your score at the end of period two. We'll be back before you know it. Okay, then, yeah, then, I mean, he's a smaller guy, so if, if it, yeah, right, so, I mean, if,
if, if it was warranted, then it was warranted, and if not, I mean, again, it's a three-man system, so it's it's hard for him to keep track of the puck and everything going on beyond the play, too. So this is for Coach. Um, I know that you're stepping up now to be – the head coach and not the assistant coach um, has pretty much doubled your workload. Is there any kind of insight on when we may possibly see an assistant coach or even a trainer for our team? The, the trainer thing is, I mean, um, obviously not ideal. Um, we have a bit of a system in place going forward uh, to alleviate that problem. Um, so that's kind of being addressed, and I think that'll be, you know, more at a hundred percent rate moving forward, which will be good. Um, you know, not only for me, obviously having a clear line of communication with somebody, but um, for these guys to be comfortable and not have a different set of eyes and ears and a different mouth talking every other day. So um, that's getting addressed, which is good. And then on the assistant coach side, it's. It's kind of more of the same. I mean, I'm always, I'm still looking. It's just for me, it's it's trust and, um, but also somebody that's going to challenge me. So I'm not making a knee jerk reaction and hiring somebody that you know I'm not comfortable with or I don't trust. So um, it's it's taken more for me to do, obviously, um, and I and to some degree I need some help, but um, I'd rather make sure I make the right decision than a rushed one. So. Hey, Josh. Um, so we're, uh, we're approaching a year since you actually first came to Macon. And those first couple games, you started off really hot. I think you had five points in three games. But um, So since then, what do you think you have learned and uh, what kind of role and impact are, do you think you're able to have on the team now? Yeah, I think... Uh... The beginning of this year has sort of been a wake-up call from that. Um, obviously, that was in the past, and that was last year's team. So um, I can't say I was like expecting to produce at that clip quite as much, but I mean, that's kind of the game I want to play. So it's it's been a learning curve for sure, not uh, not seeing the puck go in as much as it did when I first got here. So I think just. Just staying confident and not like getting down on myself is is a huge thing. Um, I think uh, trying to add parts of my game and improve parts of my game, uh, playing away from the puck and um, playing D side more is going to turn into more offense and and eventually goals and you know offense will come from that. So. To kind of follow Thank up you. on that a little bit, um, last year when you were here, uh, you clicked really well with Trask and Seamer mm -hmm. and seemed to really find a good chemistry with them. They're obviously no longer here and was curious, as you've been kind of bounced around, you know, on lines and stuff like that, as a lot of players have, but if, has there been anyone in particular that you feel like you've gotten some chemistry with that uh, would help bring back some of that production? Well, first, I'd just like to say that I think anybody would have a lot of production with those two. Those two are pretty good players in their own right. Um, you know, it's a good question. I don't think there's any, like, one or two specific guys that I think I gel with or have, like, a lot of chemistry with in particular. I think, I think you know, it's my job to try to develop chemistry with all, all the forwards and and – guys at every position, you know, center, right wing, whoever. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can just give you, like, one or two guys. I think I think our power play has been moving the puck pretty well. Um, last weekend, or when we played the 3-on-3 three three against Pensy, I thought our power play moved the puck pretty well. And, you know, so guys like Seas uh, and Ortiz, even Cupper at the point, I think I think those guys running power plays can move the puck pretty well. Um but I just, I just try to play a, a complete game and try to be able to play with everybody.
Uh, this one's for uh, Ben. Um, so obviously Fayetteville presents a pretty great challenge. Uh, you guys have played them, I think, twice this year, and uh, you've skated. You've skated. You guys have skated pretty well with them, but I haven't gotten a win yet. So, what do you look forward to the most? Having two opportunities to play against these guys, and what do you think the team's overall attitude is with having two opportunities to finally get a win against them? So I think I don't think I was here um, against Fayetteville. I think that was before my time, uh, but I did have the opportunity to play play against them uh, when I was in Knoxville. Um, and I know that they have a lot of size and skill and speed, uh, at least up front. Uh, so I think uh, we're definitely going to have to slow them down in the neutral zone, um, force them to dump pucks and, and get get back to those pucks quickly uh, as a defensive core and, and make a good first pass to, to get some clean entries and um, you know out of our zone quickly and into theirs. Uh, but you know we're excited to play uh, another top end team. Uh, we were happy with our results against Pensacola last weekend. Obviously, uh, we would have liked to get that extra point on Saturday night. But um, you know the opportunity to play uh, you know, a, a third place team or, or whatever there are is um, you know if we can string a couple of wins together, we can kind of put the league on notice that uh, uh, you know tough times are behind us and, and we're moving forward. And this this last one's for Coach. Uh, Friday, um, uh, Stuart was rocking the the red shorts. Um, on Saturday, was he finally able to get a pair of blue ones? No, I think he wore them red. I didn't even he, pay attention. He wore to that. His, He had his Cornell. Yeah, thing. well, he played at uh, Cornell University at school, and they're red and white. So, um, I mean, it, it technically matches with us. So I'm I'm fine with it. It actually probably goes better with our road jerseys. I like the red pants. <laughs>
Um, I know, Coach, we've talked about uh, Dylan Denemy a little bit. Am I pronouncing that right? Denemy? Yes. Okay. Um, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask him. Um, but today, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first time you saw him skate, uh, first time you saw him practice. Um, right off the bat on Friday night, because he is expected to play, wearing the number 96, what's, what role do you have in mind for him right off the bat? What sort of uh, game do you uh, look for out of him on Friday? Um, well, like I said, I think, I mean, he's been skating. It's just, you know, it's hard to simulate game speeds and, and kind of three periods of doing it. So um, I think it's going to be all about, you know, my expectations or simplicity out of him in the sense that, you know, he may not have the hands and the feet really going right away. Um, so, you know, maybe it's more being good in our D zone and getting pucks out and getting the puck in and being physical and, um, you know, shooting everything when, when those opportunities present, them, present themselves and mm -hmm. um, just kind of being 200 feet, even if it's 20 seconds and you have to get off because you're exhausted, like just, just be 200 feet for 20 seconds and we'll kind of, uh, we'll kind of go from there. Great. Last question I have for you. Um, Fayetteville this weekend, both games, uh, that's a team that's really been improving ever since Jesse Kalecki has taken over, I think. Um, we've played, DJ alluded to it earlier, we've played two games against them. They were both close. They were both one-goal losses. One of them was uh, opening night. It was an overtime. Uh, Travis Jake had the game-winning goal. Uh, that's a team that uh, we've played really close a couple games in a row now against them. Uh, what kind of games can we expect to be in store here this weekend? Um, like Ben was talking about, they're a good team. They got uh, they have a bunch of guys called up right now, but even with kind of some replacements coming in and not really at his full roster, you know, he's done a great job and they're still winning games. So, um, you know, they have forwards that are, are big and fast and can be physical and they're really good off the rush. Um, for me, I think a lot of it stems from their decor. They move pucks well, so I, I think the key for us is um, being good in, on our forecheck, being physical, you know, making them earn 200 feet every time and not turning the puck over. And we just have to make their life difficult um, for 60 minutes or, or we're going to be in trouble. Absolutely, and hopefully we can keep the, the good times rolling on home ice. Like we said earlier, five straight home wins, looking for number six on Friday night. Historically, the Mayhem have been very good against Fayetteville at home. Uh, this season has actually been an anomaly uh, in that respect. But last question I have, as always, is going to be a trivia question. It's going to be moderately difficult, I think. The question is this. Uh, Josh Keplinger last season broke a franchise record on Pucks and Paws night. What record did he break? Yes, sir. Bill Richardson, congratulations. Well done. <laughs> Can't, all right. Can you... Yeah, that's true. Eight on the weekend. How many, how many goals and assists was it? Do you remember that? That's right. Wow, he nailed it. Congratulations, Bill. You've earned a, an autographed puck from these two gentlemen. To the rest of you, thanks so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, welcome back, everybody, and we hope you enjoyed that excerpt from our last episode of Line Change, a Ryan Michael Coaches show that airs every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time at the Rookery at 543 Cherry Street in downtown Macon. You're more than welcome to come on out if you'd like to uh, get to know the players and their personalities a little bit better. We've always got two player guests on hand with us. This past week it was Josh Keplinger and Ben Campbell, both of whom did a, a really good job. Uh, so by all means... If you've got nothing to do on a Wednesday night, would like to, or I beg your pardon, on a Tuesday night, and I'd like to come on out and meet the mayhem, we invite you to do so. Every once in a while, the show is, in fact, on a Wednesday night, and not this week, but the week after that, it will be. So just be tuned on Mayhem social media for the most up-to-date news, as always. The mayhem hosting the Fayetteville Marksmen for the second-to-last time this season, the fourth time this season, they have dropped all three games in this building against Fayetteville this season. They've all come at just a one-goal defeat. So tonight, the Mayhem hoping for some redemption against a team that has just managed to barely beat them three times in a row. That second period was a raucous one. There were a total of 25 shots on goal between both teams, 16 for Fayetteville, 9 for Macon, and a couple of posts as well for the Mayhem. Only Fayetteville, however, managed to score. 
It was 2-2 heading into period two. It is 3-2 Fayetteville heading into period three. Wojtek Zemlitska is serving the tail end of that hooking infraction. He's in the box for 35 seconds to kickstart the closing stanza. It was holding, rather, against Zemlitska. So the mayhem on the J&J's heating air penalty kill for the next 32 seconds. Very important seconds, which the mayhem can't ignore. As McCloy will attempt to pass, it's swatted away by Stathasumalitis down into Fayetteville ice. And Trevor Gorsuch leaves it to Oscar Arfelt behind his own net. Time for one last Fayetteville rush on this power play. The Marksmen have not scored a power play goal tonight, but they've scored a shorthanded and a four-on-four -four goal. Five seconds, Bednard out to the Macon blue line on the left side. He's closed off by Zach Urban. The puck's been cleared. Uh, I beg your pardon, kept in the zone by Bednard. Now it's been cleared. And Sumalitas with his head up looks to receive the pass. He does from Zemlitska and fires right into the glove of Trevor Gorsuch. And Zemlitska fresh out of the penalty box near the Macon bench made a uh, crisp pass to his countryman Sumalitas who was robbed probably three, two or three times in that middle stanza. He set up Tima Fayev's equalizer late in period three last night, which ultimately forced overtime and the Mayhem getting a point in yesterday's contest. Tonight, the Mayhem have improved a two for two on the penalty kill. 19-12 to go in period three. 3-2 three, Fayetteville is your score. Josh Cousineau from in behind the goal line. Can't make the pass he wanted to to Lynch. It's picked off and taken by Bowen on the right side. And Campbell. Backhands it out to Travis Jake, who quickly sends it up to Alec Marsh. On his off wing, attempted a backhand uh, shot, which he whiffed on, but he recovered in time to feed it to Cook, who will give it to Bowen. Bowen's sharp angle shot, he scores. It squeaked through Hayden Stewart, and Brian Bowen has just scored his second goal of the night from the bottom of the far circle. A very tough angle shot, and a, not the kind of goal you would have expected Hayden Stewart to give up with the way that he's played tonight, but... Brian Bowen has given Fayetteville its first insurance lead of this game. It's 4-2 Marksman. Bowen with a pair of goals, along with Taylor McCloy. Coming into this game, we're both on top of Fayetteville's list in goals scored this season. Coming into this tilt, McCloy had eight and Bowen had 15. They're now at 10 and 17 respectively. There has been some conversation after that goal went in. I don't, I can't imagine any reason why that would uh, not stand. The play will continue. The Mayhem trailing by a pair of goals. David Palowski to take the next face off and wins it with help from Keplinger. D'Alavera gives it over to Jarrett Cup. Cup off the wall on the far side. The puck's been swatted away. Palowski will turn it back into the Fayetteville zone and it's quickly sent out of there by Josh Victor. Keplinger reorganizes and fires it in from center and it's gloved by Trevor Gorsuch who does not play it down. He takes a whistle in his own zone. had Macon's most recent goal uh, later stages of period one. That was the last time the Mayhem scored. Ex-Lawrence University captain Josh Keplinger who won a high school football championship before beginning his college hockey career at Lawrence. He played tight end, linebacker, and punter. Taylor McCloy entering the Macon zone. Big slap shot saved by Hayden Stewart, and the rebound from Gustafson went wide. McCloy centering it, and it's intercepted, and sent up the slot, and here's Keplinger for Macon. He will bounce it into the left corner of the Fayetteville zone. Whacked away by Trevor Gorsuch up to the near point, and the marksmen have cleared it out to the Macon blue line. Sumalitas back to Zach Urban. His fellow alternate captain will take it down the right wing. Sends it into the right corner of the Fayetteville zone. Lesage is hit by Urban into the end wall. Puck rolls loose to Pirog. He's got it on his backhand. We'll just twist it in below the net again. Lesage. Boy. Litska in his own zone. 
Can't get it past Bednard, who slammed himself into the half wall to keep the attack going. Timofeyev off the stick of Urban up to Sumalitis. Sumalitis' pass outside of the reach of Zemlitska, who takes it back into his own zone. 17-15 to go in the third, 4-2 Marksman. Urban, saucer pass to Pirog. Bounces off the near side boards. Pirog overskates it. Turns the corner, enters the making zone. Has to take it into the left circle and loses the puck to Shane Bednard. He will float it to the Macon blue line where it's gloved down by Larry Smith. He whacks it out to the Fayetteville blue line. Don Oliveri sends it ahead. It's redirected by Max Cook on goal. Stewart sends it off the top of the glass, barely stays in play. That was inches away from being a delay of game penalty. Cook drops it to Schwartz, right circle. He fires and it's stopped by Stewart. Bounces out to the far circle. And now it's Bo McHugh. He will shovel it to Cook in the far corner. Max Cook now behind the net. Backhands it to Schwartz. Has it punched off his stick by Kuzno, but a lot of ground was covered to make up for it by Brian Bowen. Now Cook gives it up to Alec Marsh with Schwartz in tow. Marsh put it over, hoping for Jake, who redirected it wide of the goal. Max Cook in the far corner is pestered by Ben Campbell. Campbell soccers it along the boards. Bowen backhands it back to Bowen, to uh, Cook rather. And now it's taken away by Larry Smith, who can't get it past Alec Marsh. Marsh stepping down the right circle, flings it over, good pass. Sprawling save by Stewart with his pads. Keeps the puck out, and the mayhem still within a pair of goals. And this line for Fayetteville tonight has been absolutely dominant. Max Cook, Brian Bowen, and Alec Marsh just look like men among boys out there. Trevor Gorsuch leaves it behind his own net. Oscar Arfelt. Taylor McCloy on his right. That's Brett Johnson, rather. And here's a shot. They score. It's John Gustafson sniping it over the blocker of Hayden Stewart inside the left corner of the net. And Fayetteville has a 5-2 lead. That's Gustafson's third goal on the weekend. The wheels starting to come off here in Macon. Cup. Chamello, who hacks it into the Fayetteville zone. That was Team of Fayev, rather. Chamello is after the puck now in the near corner. Hugh gets it up to Matt Robertson, who chips it into the right corner of the making zone. McHugh centers it. Bednard shoots it. Stewart the save. It's loose behind him and ultimately hacked wide of the goal. Jarrett Cup scoops it up in the far side and will advance it up to David Palowski, who gets a three on two for the mayhem. Palowski to Timofeyev, who floats one harmlessly into the glove of Gorsuch, able to make a routine save. 14.45 to go in the third period. 5 2 Marksman, now your score. Apologize for that uh, brief feedback, folks. We're going to take a brief time out on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Making Mayhem Hockey on SBHL Live and on YouTube. Good, good news, Mayhem fans. The group outing package you know and love is back for the 2019-20 season. If you bring a group of 10 or more people, you receive discounted tickets at $13 a piece, reserved seating, free hats, t-shirts, or pucks for each member of your group, and an experience upgrade of your choosing. Set upgrades include the High Five Tunnel, Bench Buddies, a picture on the ice after the game, and much more. Just be sure to call our office at 478-803-1592 in advance, and we'll get you all squared away. Johnson, get past his own blue line. Wojtek Zemlitska is out at center. He will give it over to Zach Urban, who bounces it into the Fayetteville zone. Brett Johnson. Red line, floats it off the stick of Zemlitska. John Gustafson. 
Ring will leave it down into the corner and it's fed up to the blue line. Don Oliveri, long floater that goes off the stick of Sumilitis and out of play. 14.02 to go in the third. 5-2 Fayetteville, your score. And the marksman with five unanswered goals here. Schwartz has the puck pinball off his stick. Goes back to get it in his own zone. Keplinger sends him into the corner. Max Cook escapes with it. We'll flutter it out to Brian Bowen. Bowen drops it to Travis Jacob of the right circle, whose shot also flutters out of play as it had gone off a making stick. 13.40 to go in period three. Campbell gloves the puck down in his own zone. Sends it through. Keplinger battling forward against Gorsuch, the Fayetteville goaltender, behind his own net. Works its way up the wall on the far side. Bo McHugh sends it to the tail gunner, Schwartz, whose shot is blocked by Campbell. That was Jake. Leaves it into the corner on the near side. That was Robertson, rather, taken away by Campbell, who bounces it out to Josh Cousineau in front of the Macon bench. Now it's Keplinger. Keplinger with a toe drag and a shot that gets blocked by Cody Schwartz, who fell down. Schwartz. Bernard. I beg your pardon, Brett Johnson. Arfelt ties it into the far corner of the make and end. Cup is checked by Gustafson. A pair of goals and an assist last night in his first game with the Marksman. 15 to go in the third, 5-2 Fayetteville. Timofeyev slaps it up the wall. Arfelt held it in the zone. Flutters it towards the net, whacked away by D'Olivera across his own blue line. Oscar Arfelt. D'Olivera now. Up to David Palowski. And we'll shovel it into Fayetteville Ice. Ryan Bowen. Sent it off the right side of the goal. Zach Urban now. Pirog will dip his shoulder and cut in across the Fayetteville blue line. Sumilitis with a long-range shot that's snagged out of midair by Trevor Gorsuch. 11.27 to go in the third. 5-2 marksman. And the Mayhem will get an offensive zone face-off to Gorsuch's right side. Urban rolls the puck along his own end wall to Zemlitska, who will get it up to Dylan Denemy. Now Pirog to his backhand. Feeds it to Denemy, who will put it back behind the net. Lidas out to Denemy. It escaped his reach, taken away by Marsh. Marsh up to McCloy. Left wing side. Goes wide and centers it. Ends up in the near corner. Marsh by Zemlitska and Urban, both of whom are fighting for it at the moment. We're approaching the halfway point of the third period. 10.40 to go in the third. 5-2 Fayetteville. 
Panthers have scored five unanswered goals. And all marksmen since late in the first. Max Cook twists it to Marsh, who puts it in front, and it's whacked up in the air. Lands just wide of the net, nearly bounced in. Now it's in front of the crease and twisted out of there by Statha Sumalitas. It'll land on Oliveri's blade out at center. He blasts it on net from about 80 feet, kicked away by Stewart. Pirog picks up the rebound. Emlitska, Urban. Ortiz, it flutters up into the Fayetteville slot. It's Cody Schwartz. Jake. Out of the Macon blue line. Larry Smith is there. Kuzno redirected it. Shane Bednard. Out of Bo McHugh. Behind the net, Josh Kuzno from the near corner, banking it up to Larry Smith. Tees up a one-timer, it gets blocked. Loose puck settled by Kuzino. And Bo McHugh ends up with it for Fayetteville. Arfelt. Long point shot is snagged by Stewart, who made the save on the redirect. 9-11 to go in the third, 5-2 marksman. And we're gonna take a pause on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. Making trailing by three goals here with 9-11 to go in regulation time. We'll be back in just a moment, folks. You're listening to Making Mayhem Hockey on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. Are you looking to raise some money for a cause and have a blast while doing it? The Mayhem would be happy to help you out through our fundraiser program available for all home games throughout the season. You buy tickets from us for $10 each, you sell them for $15, and you keep the remaining $5 per ticket sold for whichever cause your heart desires. If you were to sell 50 tickets, for example, you would collect $250 for your fundraiser. Call our office at 478-803-1592 for more information. Beloved Family 4-Pack is back. The Mayhem are offering this incredibly affordable package for several games throughout the season. For just $50, you receive four tickets and a $30 gift card to Texas Roadhouse at 5080 Riverside Drive right here in Macon. The dates for these four-pack nights will be announced on social media as they become finalized, so be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for all the most up-to-date content. Fayev will roll a puck ahead, hoping to spring Sean Lynch in behind the Fayetteville defense. They were able to catch up with him. Flick spears it out into the Jarrett Cup vicinity. He will take it deep into his own zone and slide it across to Alex D. Oliveira. Long point shot by Arfelt, blocked by Cup. Gets back onto it and is able to end it. Step on Team of Fayev. He's joined by Lynch and Pulowski. Team of Fayev to his backhand in the near circle. Just flutter it in behind the net. Don Oliveri is there. We'll send it up his own slot. John Gustafson. Oliveri. Off the right corner boards and bounces to Hayden Stewart. 8.14 to go in the third. Zemlitska. it over the Fayetteville goaltender and it bounces right in front and it's salvaged by Bowen and played ahead Max Cook will attempt to pass it to himself to get around Zach Urban. Cook throws it over, broken up by Cousineau. Jamello leaves it. Urban will take over behind his own goal. No. Away from a pair of bodies then loses it to Don Oliveri. Take the pass, left it to Pirog, and he will steamroll his way out to center. He banks it to himself off the sideboards and will carry it in behind the Fayetteville cage. Bins, far corner, tries to set up Denemy. It was intercepted by a pair of marksman sticks, and out they come with it. Bednard. 
Matt Robertson on the near side of the ice. Larry Smith take it away from him. We'll punch it ahead to Dylan Denemy, who's joined by Stathis Sumalitis. Tried to feed him the pass. It was played instead by Cody Schwartz. Benard from center ice sends it at the net, and a routine stick save is made by Hayden Stewart. Campbell on the rebound. Smith. Line sends it off the back wall. And wrapped around by Gorsuch. And McCloy. Taken zone. Draws a penalty. Johnson gave it to McCloy behind the net. McCloy still looking for the hat trick. He had a pair of goals back in the first period, but has not been part of the uh, three goal surge the marksmen have put forth in periods two and three. Johnson long one-timer, missed the left post. Arfelt put it off the side of the net. The Mayhem has still not touched this puck. Keelick, right point to Cook. Slot shot, Stewart the save. He was able to make a nice save on Josh Victor, who was parked in the slot. You don't see that too often. 5.39 to go in the third, 5-2 in favor of Fayetteville, and the marksmen are going back to the power play for the third time tonight. Flings the puck all the way down from his own zone, deep into Fayetteville ice. Wrapped up with Travis Jake. Hook. Puck. Here's a wrist shot from John Gustafson that missed the left elbow. Jake. Owen. Our half wall, twist it down to Cook in the far corner. Rolled it back up the boards to Bowen, bounced off his blade. It's kept in the zone by Jake, who gave it away to Jarrett Cup. Cup races into Fayetteville ice with Pirog. Pirog from the right circle, fires, he missed the net. It rattles back out to neutral territory, Wojtek Zemlitska. Low check, Stathis Sumalitis. For Shimmy to try to get away from Lesage. He's able to do it, but he's outnumbered one to four. He attempts a shot and stopped by Trevor Gorsuch. Was unbeknownst to its whereabouts, the marksmen are all over it. Keelick back to Jake. Three, five seconds remain on this making penalty kill. Perfect tonight, but they've allowed a shorthanded goal and a four on four goal. Bednard down the left side. Like it might have gone onto the making bench or perhaps over the glass and out of play. 4.09 to go in the third period. The marksman of the 5 2 advantage here, and it looks as though Macon's point streak will come to an end tonight, barring a uh, three goal surge by the Mayhem in the closing 4.09. We'll be back to bring you the rest of this game in just a moment, folks. You're listening to Macon Mayhem Hockey on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. Try, trying to plan out a night of fun for an upcoming birthday? Why not spend it right here with the Mayhem? The Tommy's Bakery and Cafe Birthday Suite is available right here at the Macon Centerplex for all home games during the 2019-20 season. The birthday suite comes chock full of benefits, including 12 tickets, a private suite area with a great view of the ice, donuts from Tommy's Bakery, a visit from Mac the Mascot, and a special present for the birthday child. All of this for just $250, with additional tickets available for $12 each. Visit MakinMayhem.com or call our office for more information. Arfelt upended. Marcus Ortiz attempts to stuff it in from the side of the goal. He's brought down and a penalty called against Fayetteville. 
And that'll wipe out what's left of this Fayetteville power play, which only had 14 seconds remaining on it. Ortiz drew a tripping penalty, and Ryan Michael might want to think about pulling Hayden Stewart to make it a six on four here. The Mayhem need three goals in the next 353, and they've got to get desperate. And we'll see if the Mayhem head coach decides to do that. Not very often do you see a coach pull his goaltender in situations where the team's down by three or more. But when there's a power play opportunity like this, this might be the only time where it would be conceivable. Only if it was a must-win game for the Mayhem, you'd see something like that. Puck's been fired all the way down the ice into the making zone. Ben Campbell will come away with it. Larry Smith let out of the penalty box. The Mayhem have returned to full strength and will go to a slightly abbreviated power play for the next minute and 38 seconds. Here's Denemy centering, shot, just missed the net. A close call from Sumalitis, who's just been snake bitten all night, it seems. Denemy gives it across, excellent pass, but whiffing on it was Pirog. He recovers and gives it to Cup at the blue line, long slap shot. It's kicked away by Trevor Gorsuch with the pads. Cup. Cousineau. Go wide on Tim Kielik and put it in front for Sumalitis. Given off to Timofeyev into the slot for Cups, whose one-timer redirects wide off the stick of Oscar Arfelt. Cousineau. Backed around and into neutral territory, and Jarrett Cup is in a foot race with Tim Kielik for possession. Urban doubles back to help out his D partner, and he will then twist it up to Timofeyev. Got too much on it. Timofeyev motoring down the left side with Ortiz in tow. Timofeyev gives it over. Here's a shot that bounces off the paddle of Trevor Gorsuch. Timofeyev up to the blue line for Wojtek Zemlitska. Timofeyev's pass broken up by Brett Johnson, covered by Timofeyev at center. He his way over the Fayetteville blue line with 10 seconds remaining on this Fayetteville power play. Don Oliveri standing in the All-State bounding penalty box. Palowski behind the Fayetteville net. Didn't really have anywhere to go with it, and the marksmen are back to full strength. Oliveri receives a long pass. He does a stutter step, enters the making zone in the right circle. Had his shot get blocked, and it's gone out of play. 101 seconds remain in this one. The uh, jersey auction after the game, folks. We won't uh, have time to stick around for too long after this game's over, so we'll wrap up the out-of-town scoreboard update now while we've got a second. But, uh, like we said, every game besides this one, a central standard time puck drop, so the rest of the league a little bit behind uh, this tilt. Birmingham and Roanoke still scoreless early in the second period. Huntsville trailing by a goal to Knoxville, 1-0 the score out in Huntsville tonight, and the Ice Flyers down in Pensacola, still leading 1-0 over the Evansville Thunderbolts early in period two. Up your final out-of-town scoreboard update of this game, brought to you by Hampton Inn & Suites. Sean Lynch, the Beyond Taboo Tattoo penalty box. Now to Chamello, who will backhand it below the Fayetteville goal line. Travis Jake has just floated it out from there, down into Macon Ice. Alvera sends it into the zone. And now the public address announcer, Charles Olson. Behind there. <laughs> Long clearing attempt just misses the stick of, jo of uh, Brett Johnson, who was chasing after it. He's met in the near corner by Larry Smith. Smith will backhand it along the end wall to Ben Campbell. Melitas down his off wing. Still looking to get a point after what's been a disappointing night for him in terms of results. He's been excellent in creating opportunities, but he's not been able to find the net or help a teammate do so. Coming into this game on a nice little roll, had assists in back-to-back -back games and three points in his last four.
That's done it. 5-2 the final. And the wheels really just came off for the Mayhem, who kind of went into a tailspin at the end of the second and the beginning of the third, and we're not, we're not able to, uh, to bounce back after that. And this was by far Macon's largest margin of defeat on home ice uh, in quite some time. And as a matter of fact, the last time the Mayhem lost by three goals at home was on November 9th of 2019 against the Peoria Rivermen. So a uh, tough loss here for the Mayhem in front of a pretty darn good crowd on Marvel Superhero Night. But the Mayhem, uh, regardless, saluting the, crowd, the uh, fans who have supported them all weekend long and tonight in particular on Marvel Superhero Night. The supporting is not done yet. These jerseys will be sold at a live auction in the Centerplex lobby immediately following tonight's game. So those of you who tuned in this weekend on YouTube or on SPHL Live, we really appreciate it. We're happy that you were able to join us, uh, whether it was yesterday or today. We're so glad to have you with us on the Mayhem Broadcast Network. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast this evening in spite of the outcome if you're a Mayhem fan. Once more, the Marksman with five, the Mayhem with two, and the Mayhem will head to a five game road stretch uh, in the next few weeks to wrap up what's left of January. They will actually have two January home games at the very end of the month on the 30th and 31st. But until then, they've got Fayetteville next Friday on the road, followed by Roanoke on Saturday and Sunday, and then Peoria the following week on January 24th and 25th. And thanks so much for joining us tonight, folks. We hope to have you on board with us on our next home broadcast, which will be Thursday, January the 30th on College Night at the Macon Centerplex. For tickets, you can visit the Mayhem website, MaconMayhem.com, or just swing by the box office right here at 200 Coliseum Drive. Until the 30th, Alex Von Coydel signing off from the Macon Centerplex, saying so long, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.